It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Renee, Andy, and Alex are all here. And, of course, we're going to talk about an Apple event. It looks like we've got a date. We also have a pretty good idea of what Apple might announce. We'll go through that. And what happened to the iMac Pro and what's going to replace it? It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 756, recorded Tuesday, March 9th, 2021. That damn dung beetle. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. Hiring is challenging, especially with everything else you have to consider today. But there's one place where hiring is simple, fast, and smart. That place is ZipRecruiter. Try ZipRecruiter free at ZipRecruiter.com slash MacBreak. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And by SanDisk's data storage solutions. Check out their new iExpand Flash Drive Lux today and get 15% off your first order of featured SanDisk products at SanDisk.com slash MacBreak. And by ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is the app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers so your ISP can't see what you're doing. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to ExpressVPN.com slash MacBreak. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Apple. We've got the panel here. They're all here. Renee Ritchie from uh, YouTube.com slash Renee Ritchie. Hi, Renee. Hey, Leo. If we, I'm hoping we have no news because those are always the best shows. I think it's a slow <laughs> news, not no news. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. It's a, room, it's a heavy rumor day because I think we're going to have a lot of news sometime this month. We'll talk about that. Yes. Uh, in just a little bit. I mean, I think that's a safe bet. We don't know exactly when, but we'll yes. talk about that a bit. Also, Andy Anatko from uh, WGBH in Boston and Anatko.com. Hello, Andrew. Hello. Yeah, you, you, know that it's, you know that it's a slow week when even like the rumor people are saying, yeah, in the 2030s, Apple is going to be releasing <laughs> yeah. contact lines. It's 2030s. Like, okay. 2030s Let's now. Wow. I'm so here okay. for that. Cyborg yeah. Renee. <laughs> That's a little far off. Also, Alex Lindsay from Office Hours and 090.media. Hello, Alex. Hello, hello. From Office Hours. Is that okay if I say that? Yeah, sure. That's good. It's, it's a big chunk, of, big chunk of my day. He devotes hours <laughs> every day to a free uh, Zoom session. Uh, you can watch a bit of it on YouTube because they record a bit of it, but really the whole thing you have to be there for, which I think is smart. That's the clubhouse way. You have to be there for it. Well, it's, I it's saw just that there was very, office hours at night. Right. Is that a new thing, Alex? There's like multiple so, times a day now you can office hours? Yeah. <laughs> Monday, uh, to my wife's chagrin, uh, Monday uh, at 6, we open up. We had a, a lot of folks that were on the other side of the world and some folks that just, this is the middle of the day for them when we do the morning one. And so there was a lot of requests to go into the evening. And so for one day a week on, on Mondays, we do an evening show, which is a lot of fun. Uh, we had we had a lot of fun last night. And then we do a clubhouse on Wednesdays um, at 7. Um, and so uh, so anyway, so those are the two, the two evening shows and then the rest of them are all morning, although they're getting pretty... They're getting pretty long. Saturday is the long day. So we start, I mean, the first hour is at 5 a.m. And to, on this Saturday, I think we're going to end up finishing at about three or four in the afternoon because we, we're we doing, um, like Saturday is a good example. We have we, we do a special hour on education or two hours on education. Uh, uh, we have a lot of educators that come in and talk about, you know, what's working, not working in the, the current COVID situation. And then we have a resolve training at 10, which is free, which is free. Uh, 10 to 11, then there's a little bit of a break. And then at noon, we're all, we're all going to build a playout system out of a Raspberry Pi. And so <laughs> everyone just, everyone's buying Raspberry Pis and we're all just going to sit around. We're going to sit around on Zoom and University. figure it out. Like, oh, it, it's, it's, you're, I, I think most, a lot of people in office hours would say that we're, we're all learning faster than we have in a long, That's long really time. Cool. It's university. So, I suppose yeah, yeah, yeah. I should hang out in there and learn things about, after all, this is my business is doing this, but I... No, no, Leo, Leo, don't, don't, you'll, you'll become one of them. I'm, I'm starting to get <laughs> so once, 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 once you, I think, I think that if, if this, this, if this curve continues to go up, you're going to hit that point where the phrase, I can't believe that you spent time with your family when you knew that we had office hours at, at 3 a.m. On, on a Saturday night. It was all, like Alex's fault, sleeping. All, all Alex's fault all along. 
Oh, my sleep hygiene. Where is your loyalty? Song, as the song goes. <laughs> it's a telethon. Alex, you're, you're, start, you're starting a telethon is what you're doing. all along. <laughs> Uh, iOS 14.4.1. I bet you Apple did not want to release this, given that 14.5 is probably just around the corner. But they had to. Mac OS 11.2.3, addressing a WebKit vulnerability. Uh, a, I guess a fairly serious WebKit vulnerability. WebKit, of course, powers uh, Safari, which means it powers every time you go web browsing or even read HTML email, WebKit is rendering it. The vulnerability was discovered by security researchers from Google and Microsoft. Uh, you know, I bet you it's hard for Apple. Bless their they, Project Zero they, heads. They, they want to say thank you, but at the same time, it's like, <laughs> thank you. Uh, it may have allowed bad actors, apparently Nicolas Cage is in there, I don't know, to execute code on your devices. Oh, ouch. I know, that's bad, I know. Okay, Leo! excuse me. Bringing out the dead, he was working with Martin Scorsese, okay? And also, Valley and Girl. Ghost Rider 2 is an unappreciated, no, I'm not in uh, Underappreciated, not unappreciated. He's just made some bad choices, all right? He got into some Actually, financial I, trouble. He I like his Nicholas Cage. Collection. I like his weird choices. He's not a bad actor, he's just different. We He's dodged the Superman Cage. bullet with Nicolas Cage. <laughs> I'm not a bad <laughs> wizard. <laughs> uh, may have allowed bad actors to execute code on your devices using maliciously crafted web content. That's really, really dangerous because, as I said, yes. web content is everywhere, even in your email. Uh, so update, uh, if you haven't already updated, whenever you see these, update. A Apple did not really say clearly what this was all about, right? Um, support it's pages. one of those tensions, though. Like you, right now, they're putting Blastdoor into iMessage because it's become more important to disassemble all the payloads before we ever see them. But for a decade, all we've heard about is how important speed is on web browsers. How just-in-time compilers have to be faster. They have to start doing like I think on Windows for a while they were actually executing stuff in the data space to save time not having to transfer it back and forth and we saw how that worked out so i think we'll, we'll get to a point where there's a reckoning where we have to start understanding the security implications of all that speed to render That's amazing yeah so safari was updated mac os big sur was updated watch os was updated wow and yeah. uh and ios and things. ipad os all the things just shows you how how um uh, How many dependencies there are inside yeah, the Mac community? Yeah. That, Omnipresent. It's, it's all, it's all one. It's all, it's all one code base, and yeah. they just keep expressing yeah. it in different devices. Yeah. WebKit is omnipresent. And it's good and bad because they're all vulnerable, but then they all get fixed. They're all patchable. <laughs> Otherwise, they wouldn't all be vulnerable, but maybe they all wouldn't get fixed. Yeah. It would be more work to fix them yeah. this way. Yeah. They all get hit, but they all get fixed. So if you're on Big Sur, there'll be a uh, OS update. If you're on Catalina or Mojave, there'll be a Safari update, and that should be, I yeah. guess, sufficient. I don't. You know, it's one of those things where Apple kind of talks about it, but that kind of doesn't want to talk about it. So uh, that's anyway, whenever there's a security update like this, uh, especially this close to 14.5, I think it means this is serious. When, I think it, they use Safari and QuickTime to, as a way to update the like the foundation uh, of the operating system as well out of bands so without having to do a whole update. Uh, they can still go in and fix Safari and that fixes all the WebKit rendering or sure. QuickTime and that fi fixes all the core foundation, that like makes the sense. AV foundation, all those yeah, things. Yeah, that makes sense. So WebKit, even though it's a library, external library, updating Safari really is updating WebKit. And so you're fixing, yeah. you're fixing whatever is going on. So... Alert, alert, warning, Will Robinson. Danger, danger. Just do it. <laughs> um, so we are coming close to 14.5. I presume that's going to be part of whatever is this announcement in March. Um, the leaker that suggested, first there was a leaker that suggested March 16th, we uh, next Tuesday, which we uh, completely uh, took apart last week. Now, the latest, and this comes from a reputable Chinese leaker, according to Mac reputable. Rumors. He's a leaker. Yes. How can it be reputable? Duan yeah. Rui. He's like 97% he's like accurate because he only talks like three days before something happens. But it's <laughs> all, I think it's 97% happens. He waits or she waits and then just – I figure they just look at the trucks coming off of uh, Hanhe or Foxconn or something, writes it down, and then puts it on Weibo. So he he uh, he tweets. It seems, among other things, he talks about the OnePlus Nine new product launch event, 
and the Apple event are held the same day. And he's saying March 23rd, to which John Prosser, another pretty reliable guy, says, yep, hearing the same thing. Didn't know about the OnePlus event, though. Ha ha. Uh, <laughs> nobody's going to know about the OnePlus event if Apple's doing an event at the same time. So, but this isn't Apple too... Apple probably didn't know about the OnePlus yeah, event. Yeah, right. This isn't yeah. too much of a surprise. I mean, uh, we, ex we kind of expected something in March. And so there's only... It could be next Tuesday, the Tuesday after the Tuesday after that. This, the, so yep. it, one, one in three, right? I mean, there, or could it be that there's yeah. no event in March at all? There, there are too many things in the hopper at this point. Yeah. I, I'd be very surprised if we didn't see something very, very shortly. You want to unclog the hopper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nobody wants to walk around with a clogged hopper. <laughs> show title. Well, Prosser <laughs> actually put show the date up. Yeah. Um, he just wrote 23 in a tweet a while ago. And one thing I always like say, like like, like John Prosser and these people, they aren't leakers. Like the leakers are in the company. They're reporters. They report on, on the information that they're given. But there's become like this weird culture around calling somebody a leaker, which has led to a bunch of fake anonymous leakers. So I try to tamp that down whenever I see it. Oh, that's so Prosser's a good point. a reporter for Front Page Tech. And right. he's reporting on the leaks that he's gotten. Which says the 23rd and also uh, I think he said four four products are ready. They may not all be in the event. Some might be press released or, or come out around the event. But there's four products that are good to go for the event. He says AirTags, iPad Pro, AirPods and a new Apple TV, which is all yeah. of which we've kind of been hearing, especially AirTags, yeah. <laughs> hearing about for a while. Um, they forgot to put the air tags on the air tags, Leo. So they could not find the air tags. They lost so the air tags. Too much grief about. How long have we been it, talking about air tags? It's been like two years of air tags. It's, it's like forever. Just September yeah. 2019. So wow. And so it is. It's it's uh, it's coming on two years this September. But it, so a year and a half. So air tags. Uh, what do we know about air tags? I mean, I think of them as like tile, the Bluetooth tracker. Yes. Uh, but in this case, it will use features that are unique to the iPhone, especially. The uh, ultra, well, ultra wideband chip that allows you to aim the iPhone and things. Sort of, yeah. Well, ultra, I think that ultra ultra wideband provides uh, much more accuracy than Bluetooth. So you're going to be able to theoretically, you know, get pinpoint the the area there. There's questions about whether uh, you can use. Um, I think some of the rumors have been talking about, uh, you know. IDs through your phone. <laughs> you, can, you can look up and see like an arrow. Like an AR, there. like an AR. Like yeah. I'm looking if like this mix, and is, I get an AR picture of my yeah. wristwatch. Of where it is. Yeah. Like it's over there, you know, that, that kind of nice. thing. Um, uh, what's what's really interesting, and I don't know what will happen with it, is whether the, there will be inf kind of an infrastructural support for ultra wideband where, uh, you know, or like a convention center or an arena, not that it's a, that useful right now, but um, could install these so that if you if you decide you want to look for something, you it could be very very accurate, um, and and you could figure out like simple things like where's the bathroom, <laughs> you know yeah. where's the hot dogs, yeah, uh, you know and and part of that becomes also when I really know where you are and I really know what you want, you know again when we get back to a point where we're using arenas and stadiums and everything else, being able to load balance uh, users to the you know to the right concessions is is not a trivial thing, you know being able to say. Uh, I want to, because right now there's, you know, you want to, the, the, one of the reasons people don't buy things is because there's going to be a long line. And so if you can tell them where to go, where there won't be a long line or better yet, just deliver it to them. So if you look at some new arenas, they'll have, they'll deliver it to you, but it's because they know what seat you are in, you know, because you ordered it on, you know, you, you bought the, the, you manage the ticket in your phone. So they know that you're in J18 and J19. So when you order something some, like at the Golden well, One Arena and, cool. well, that's already exists. The problem is, is that. Uh, so that exists now. So if you go to Golden One Arena, you don't in need Sacramento, an usher anymore. You just follow your phone. They just, well, they yeah, that's the whole thing. Is right now they know what seat to take it to. With ultra wideband, they could they know where to take it to. And so so you can imagine being able to let's say I mean with this kind of accuracy, you could get to a point where um, you could order a beer at Coachella, <laughs> and someone would bring it to you. <laughs> you know, like like you know they oh, would just they could find literally you. bring it. They could find you, ah. you know, like they would just go, you say, I want a beer. You don't and, have to say and, where you, know, you are. You just, they follow and, the and, air tag. And there's an awful lot of people that would pay $3 for that. Oh, you know, like three extra awesome. dollars on yeah. top of the beer yeah. so that I didn't have to go wandering around, stand in line, do yeah. all those other things. Yeah. And so, you know, ordering a hamburger or a beer. If you get lost in a stadium or a big shopping center somewhere, drop it. With this installed, you would. I think it's well, the privacy stuff though is what Apple's trying to engineer. Like the, well, we, we've had tiles. Samsung has their smart tags now, but a lot of this stuff, like immediately when Apple becomes involved, it's Wall Street Journal headlines about Apple creates stalker technology. And I think a lot of what we're seeing 
both with how they announced Find My, how they announced the API, like the so the SDK, so that other people can make Find My devices, not just Apple. So it's not like a an Apple only story. And now we just saw an iOS 14.5 a pop up that'll warn you that they have there has an unknown uh, device that could track Tracking you, you on you. I think they're <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, no, but I mean, there's a lot of really interesting technologies well, that, here. Yeah. Like the the basic way it works is. You en you enlist the advice on your Apple ID, and then it's recorded on Apple's cloud. But Apple doesn't know it's your device; it's just an entry on the cloud. And then, as you're walking around, if you detect a device, it'll alert. If that device is in a file, like a, a Find My state, it'll alert Apple, but it won't tell them what your device is. It'll have the location, but not associated with your device. It won't say the device you're found. It'll just put the ID in a lookup table. And then if you log into iCloud to find your device, it'll match your ID to the lookup table and you'll know where it is. But without knowing who found it, like there's all these protections in place to make it not a stalker technology. But I'm still 100 percent convinced that will be every headline as soon as it's rolled out. Well, and there's, but there's and, and again, there's, I there's think a bunch of. There, there, there's a there's also a bunch of really really deeper things that Apple put in there, uh, like is, isn't there like last was it last year or just a few months ago that they have uh, a a feature of Find My that could basically say that. Uh, it sees Bluetooth devices that are around you, and if it notices, hey, there's a Bluetooth device that seems to be following you around, uh, this is it, yes. it will like flag it for you and let you know that there that 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 could be another like anti-stalker technology. Uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see how they balance not only the privacy stuff but also to see how far they can leverage that privacy to get people to trust uh, AirTags the way that they may not necessarily trust the tile. Will they be able to say, by the way, if you sew this, if you if you uh, sew this into the backpack of your kid uh, of your of your six seven eight nine year old it will make sure that you and only you can locate that that backpack and locate that kid but nobody who's not authorized to track that tag could possibly it's and that's going to be the sort of stuff they can only leverage if they if they just as renee says make that case that we are not like any other company we are privacy first this is not something that we decided to add on to the feature later on after we designed the u1 chip after we designed all this other stuff we started from the ground up with the idea that nobody else but you should be able to track items that's on that uh, that's attached to that uh, associated with that chip it's really and there's horny a lot of because like some people are worried there's like a bluetooth signal coming off your kid and someone walking around like people used to walk around looking for rfid and passports or on credit cards or things like that might just start looking for bluetooth and how many bluetooth signals do you need in one place for them to be sufficiently um, you know, abstract it away from any one person. And then if you're alone in a field, there's no one around to track you, but you're the only, there's so many complexities here that I'm really curious how it's going to play out. But, th and I think that that's why it's so important. It's such a, a key part of Apple's business model is uh, privacy, that they're going to think through those things. They're going to think hard about them because they're not trying to leverage that any other way. They, they just want it to be convenient <laughs> for you to, you know, your device to work really well. Um, and they're not interested in selling you anything or selling your data or selling, you know, they're, that, that's not where they're coming from. And I think that that's why a lot of people may, may trust it more than, more than many of the other ones that are selling all that data. And so I, th you know, and th because once you go over the, the, the idea of, I can trust Apple to do this, or I can trust the process. There's, there are a lot of great things you can do uh, to make things more convenient when you're at a tourist site to find back <laughs> to find your your uh, you know the next restaurant to find the place you're going to find each other. I mean the the, the thing you see again if you go to, I work at a, I've worked at a lot of festivals and when you, the number one thing you see people doing is trying to find each other. They're all waving their yeah. hand. I'm over yeah, here. Yeah. So that all goes away if you have if if ultra wideband is and you trust it enough and you decide that that's going to be okay. That that literally just disappears, you know, and and for parents, I you know, I've had a moment where I lost my son <laughs> at the California Science. The worst you know. ever feeling, right? It's just it, well, it was funny. My yeah. you know, my my mother. It, it, there was a there, there there could have been like a um you know when that happened. Uh, this is when my son was like three years old. My my wife puts out a shriek that I think is a an instinctual shriek that attracts all the other mothers. Oh! Like all the other mothers, just, like it was just like this it's incredible like scream. Of the body Suddenly there were like there were like oh! twelve there were like twelve there were like twelve mothers coming and they just dispersed. Yes. They immediately knew mothers, what it was. They got yeah, the they were given an image. <laughs> they were given an image on on the phone, iPhone and then they dispersed and he was found in like ninety seconds. You know, like it was, but it was like ninety seconds. It felt like it was years. You I know? wish and, I'd and known so that because I lost Abby at Legoland and I didn't know to make the yeah. mother scream. You got you asked because uh, men, men are not capable. Of it. It's only no. mothers that can give that. Can you do the do the scream? I, I so screamed the, inside. That's for went, sure. Ah! <laughs> so the uh, but but the thing is, is that if you think about those kinds of things, um, 
uh, that being able to find your kids, being able to find other people that you're just trying to meet, being able to find where you're trying to get to, and then also just creating entire experiences over top of it. I mean, when people come in early for a concert, there could be all kinds of games and other things that are living in the virtual world <laughs> that have nothing to do with, you know, that you can play and, and enjoy before you even got to the concert um, that are all mapped onto the walls and mapped onto things. But we need to know where you are. Um, we need to be able to... Uh, reduce the what part of the database we have to search to figure out the 3d representation of that and that's where the lidar comes in and then we can start mapping things onto it and so there's a lot of really uh, interesting things that are slowly coming together so um do we i mean how much do we know renee about these do we know what they look like do we know the size do we know if they use I mean, ble the as well as uwb bluetooth light or what yeah, I mean, depending on how accurate the leaks have been, we either know a lot or we or mistakenly nothing. think we know a lot. <laughs> yeah. But if we trust if we trust everything, like if we go with all of these leaks being accurate, um, there may be two sizes, but there sounds like there's going to be one that's roughly the size of a bottle cap or a quarter that actually has uh, ultra wide band and Bluetooth LE, at least at one point, was engraved on it. And I don't know, I don't ever want to own anything from Apple that has Bluetooth LE engraved on it. Oh, I remember LE that picture. Yeah, it, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so that that I'm hoping is a hard out, but it, we, yeah, and the Find My Network was announced at WWDC 2019. I mean, so we're coming up on two years on that, and the technology was Apple's done a really good job documenting at least a high level of the technology in their security white papers, and it looks really, really robust. So. I, again, I'm, I know there's going to be headlines. I know they're going to be dragged across the internet. That is good. I want this stuff hammered. I want to know everything about it. And if there is any vulnerabilities, I want them fixed. Uh, but I think the underlying technology certainly seems really like privacy by designed. And that makes me happy. What's the holdup? There was two initially. So it first came out, I think, they might have been slightly worried about the ongoing antitrust issues because Tile was one of the companies that was making those yeah, accusations. Still is, by the and way. And so they yeah. announced, yeah. So they announced uh, that Find My would be open for anybody to use. So instead of being anti-competitive, it's now hugely competitive, but probably mostly for Tile, which is sort of like be careful what you wish for. Uh, and then the other one, I think they were worried that with the pandemic, we, we it wouldn't be a useful product. It wouldn't sell well because we're not going out and losing things the way we might. It, like I, I'm still. I've used Tile. I, I've looked at the Samsung stuff. I don't know how much I'll end up using them. My like intellectually, I'm happy they exist. Practically, I don't know how much we're all going to end up using them. I, but I think Apple I, wanted to wait until we were going outside again before they made them a like a sellable product. I I, uh, I have a Tile on my uh, on my car keys. Yeah, <laughs> and I use it about once a month. Yeah, <laughs> like, I will. Where, where you know my, I will like, buy I a buy ton of these AirTags. So one thing we do know for sure, these are in, this is in the beta of 14.5, right? These yeah. images. Yeah. Uh, keep track of your everyday items. Tag your everyday items with B389 and never lose them again. Add B389. This is in the Find My app. Obviously, B389. My guess is like, yeah, Beacon. Uh, yeah, maybe it's a Beacon, but it will be replaced yeah. when this comes out with probably the word air tags, but... Or a mm -hmm. tag or something. Maybe beacon. It's, it's interesting. interesting they didn't hide this better. Because like sometimes they've accidentally not hidden things. Like there's there's little flags they can set to hide these things and not have them go out into the beta builds. And this is one of those few times where I wonder if they're like, there's going to be so much rigmarole around this. We're going to just slowly start seeding it so that Slow a lot drip. of the rigmarole gets handled before the yeah, before this stuff comes out. There's also get into Joanna Hearn's hands now so that yeah. they pay for it later. There's also some weird code that if you lose an item, say you say you put an air tag on your yeah. keys, you get a notification <laughs> on your phone, you could tap a button in the Find My app, that'll cause the air tag to chime loudly. The trackers used to do that. I don't know about tiles, but trackers yeah. would do that. It also appears augmented reality, this is from Mac Rumors, will play a role in tracking down lost items. The Find My app might include an AR kit feature. So this is yep. the image that's in, I think that's in 14.5 of two balloons. There's a string of code. It may be, that may be made up because it may just be based on this string of code in iOS 13 that says, walk around several feet and move your iPhone up and down until a balloon comes into view. Maybe they don't look like these balloons. That might just be Mac Rumors fanciful hmm. vision. Well, and, and the thing is, is because the, because these, these beacons are a lot more accurate than Bluetooth, you know, Bluetooth, it can be is typically in kind of the three to five feet range. These are much less than a foot. 
and so, you know, they can really guide you into exactly where you need to find something. They don't have to beep uh, because they're actually accurate enough to give you a balloon or an arrow or, or something that yeah. is pretty darn accurate, uh, you know, into That's what, really you, cool. yeah. what you That's really cool, yeah, because it's in the couch. And as you and and if you, the Apple TV, yes, if the Apple TV controller does not have a U1 chip in it, I, the new one, I'm going to flip a table because oh I lose that thing so always. Me too. And it's under me the too. pillows. Like, and I just need AR to tell me where it is. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I think, yeah, like, I, I, I think it's... I, every time... I think it's... I'm, Go ahead. I think it's very, very telling that all the rumors that we've been hearing about the ear tags, none of them indicate that there's any kind of like a little peeper in it to make noise. That indicates that Apple is very, very confident that if the location of that it pinpoints for you is going to be so good that it doesn't necessarily have to make noise or vibrate. I think it does make noise. It does. Yeah, yeah. It has both. Yeah, that's what the rumor I just read said. So. Well, who, oh, you know, no one either. really freaking knows. One of the problems with Bluetooth trackers is Bluetooth itself is only, you know, is, I mean, I think Bluetooth 5 now has a longer range, but it's still just, you know, 100 meters or 150 meters. Mm. So this is what Mac Rumor says, based on code found in iOS, if you lose an item that has an AirTag on it, you'll get a notification on your iPhone. Then you'll be able to tap a button in the find. Oh, no, I already did that one. This is the one. If your item is not nearby, in other words, not within Bluetooth range, and can't be located, you put it into lost mode. This is how other yeah. Bluetooth trackers work as well. In this mode, if another iPhone user, this is what's different. If you're using tracker or tile, it has to be another tile or tracker user. And this is why tile's pissed off. Any iPhone user, of which there are a billion, comes across the item, you'll be able to, they'll be able to see your contact information so that they can send you a text or give you a phone call to say, we found it. That doesn't strike me as right. That's a privacy issue right there, isn't it, Renee? You have to opt in. I believe you have to opt in to be a finder, like because they're also worried about you. Like some people are going to be concerned simply by using resources. Like, is my phone like wasting battery with these signals? Like, with looking for these find things all the time. So I believe there's going to be an opt in for the find my network, and you become like a finder who's who's and who's similarly, okay doing you'd this. have to say, oh, I lost it. I don't mind if a finder finds it and calls me. I think that's an option too. I think by default it goes to Apple, and Apple alerts you through the that would be better. Through the Find My Portal. That would be, but much you can better. choose like the same with your. See, so the thing is, like, it works so like right now you could go buy an iPhone SE and throw it in the back of somebody's car and track that thing for like two days, or an Android phone and track that thing through like. But with this, and it's the same options. If your iPhone is lost, you can just passively go track it, but you can also say put a message on because I left it in a cab and there's no way I'm going to find it, and I want the like it's valuable enough for me that I want. Yeah, I want the to cabbie to call me. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And privacy is about options. It's not about zero knowledge. Like in certain situations it's about zero knowledge, but a lot of situations yes. it's just about consent. As long as Getting you consent. consent to do yes, what you want. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, you'll also receive a notification as soon as your iPhone. This is again, this is from an article five days ago from Mac Rumors. Everything we know or think we know about the about air tags. You'll <laughs> receive a note. So consider this all speculation. You'll receive a notification as soon as an iPhone comes across your lost item. So that's what you were talking about, leveraging Bluetooth. Will I be able to? This is an interesting feature. You can set boundaries for air tags. You can say, here's a safe location. If, and you can do that with tile. Can you? Yeah, you can say, uh, well, in the boundaries, you can say, my backpack can't go more than 20 feet from me before, my, before I get Oh, yeah, Tracker will do that too. Yeah. But this is a little different. It says, if an item with an Apple tag is in a safe location, such as your home, you're not going to receive a notification when it's left behind. In other words, you right. it will not bother like you we, that you've left your Air, your uh, Apple TV remote behind. That's where it belongs. Yeah. Or or if you've or yeah. if you've checked your bag uh, at, a, at a theater or something like that. Yeah. If it leaves the safe no location, if somebody steals your Apple TV remote control, you'll get a notification, and you can share. They're going the to because it's going to have a chip in it, and they're going to want it. They're going like to want it. Just parenthetically, by the way, yesterday I spent an hour and a half with my mom trying to explain to her how to use the Apple TV remote. Steve Jobs cracked the interface with a touchpad, but they did not crack the remote. The implementation I, was not cracked. Well, the thing is, is that I'm on this show. I've been using an Apple product since 1983, and I get confused because the apps are doing different. Something's changed where the, yeah. it used to be you could just tap the thing on the top and it would just do everything yeah. you wanted to do. And now there's like, and my son knows everything. He's like, dad, use the menu. You, yeah, you but if you're 88 years, years old, imagine. imagine. No, imagine. I'm 50 and I don't yeah. understand it. Yeah. Like I, I'm 50 and I'm like, I don't understand why I have all these things. I'm, you know, it's like, I, I just want to do the thing with the top part. I don't want to deal with any of the buttons. I was able to, <laughs> I think within, in that 90 minutes to kind of 
not teach her, but set up the Apple TV so that, for instance, when you press the home, I said, press the home button. She said, so which button's that? Is that the one with the TV on it? Yeah, I said, yeah, that's the home button. Press the home. <laughs> of course, that's what it is. Press the home button. Right. And, you know, the really confusing thing is sometimes it pulls up the Apple TV app. Sometimes it pulls up home. If you press it twice, it pulls up home, but you can turn that off. I got that turned off. So it's always the home screen because she, she wanted to watch billions on showtime so i got our showtime subscription i showed her <laughs> oh this was painful how to make the icon <laughs> jiggle 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 and move up to the top of the page so that she doesn't have to go through three pages of icons i started to show her how to delete icons on the apple tv interface and i thought oh this is no this is too painful just we'll move them around and so that you don't see the stuff below the fold stuff like that yep. uh but it took me a long long time she got it uh she could never go back and do it again you know, I had to walk her through it. What's the clicker? So there's a, <laughs> you know how, mom, you have a trackpad on your laptop? Well, there's a little tiny one at the top <laughs> of the Apple TV remote. What? I wish we could do remote setup for these things. It'd be so nice if they just made a feature oh. of remote setup that oh. would let us do all of these things. Just nuts. How accurate are air tags? Mac Rumor says air tags are rumored to be more accurate than your average, <laughs> than your average Bluetooth item tracker like tile because they take advantage <laughs> of ultra wideband technology. Uh, so the iPhones have the U1 chip. We and that's the thing. We don't. There are some things that don't have a U1 chip. The the tracker does. The AirTags do, do, but uh, and the phone does if you have a late model. And if, you can imagine. imagine that, I don't know. How, I, you can imagine that the trackers are great for us to kind of throw into things and onto things. But imagine them being embedded into lots and lots of devices. Yeah. So that you just know where everything is. Yeah. And you know, you someone <laughs> takes all the what what happens when this. So when you think about the phones all being able to interact with each other and see these and be able to report back to you anonymously or whatever. Someone steals your car. It takes all the fun out of it. If you've got a tracker in it, because it just you see where the car went, you know? And so, um, you know, so the, the thing is, is that theft becomes it, it, this expanded, uh, makes theft a lot less interesting. If you're an Apple, if you're an iPhone user or an Apple user is because you could theoretically have, you know, these things could eventually be embedded to, into your, into your camera, into your, you know everything that you 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 uh, you know have that could be taken. Yeah, um, this is why know, Tile's terrified. Yeah. But that's, well, it's the, why the there's a whole there's a whole industry of of uh, back of the truck things that fell out of the back of the truck should be yeah. terrified because this this oh, really takes all the point. fun out of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, it does take all the fun out of it. The, the question is, how interested are the police local police departments going to be on chasing after every single one of these reports that's generated uh, by by a tag in this in this kind of a future? I mean, it's there there are a lot of implications that are academic by nature, but they're still kind of interesting. Like, uh, do you uh, just because your car has a tag in it that says that, that can track it when it's being stolen, how quickly can you get the local police department to say, hey, I have information. Here's exactly where it is. Uh, are they going to jump <laughs> on that right away or are they going to get or are they going to get to it before the before the chop shop gets to it? And another thing to think about is when how long do we have to wait until Apple gets sued because uh, there was some sort of a, a high profile enough theft. Let's say it was, it was a laptop that had something super, super valuable secret on it. And someone is really, really interested in making sure that whoever it was who stole this gets absolutely hammered by the law. <laughs> How long is it going to take for that person to at least explore suing Apple to say, well, look, clearly, if the, there, what, what are the chances that there was some person, the person who stole it had an iPhone and that the Apple tag that was, let's say it's, let's say it was a backpack, let's say it was something valuable in it, uh, that uh, the person who stole it, the air tag that I put inside this backpack or inside this parcel or this, this piece of art uh, is was close enough so that I know who stole it because, gee, maybe it was maybe it was the person whose iPhone was was uh, four feet away from this for about 18 hours starting from the hour that it went missing if that information is somehow retrievable by apple someone is going to find themselves with an interest in suing them to get at it if even if it's not uh, law enforcement this is why I'm, I'm sure that apple has an explanation of why they don't have any way whatsoever of, of rewinding and figuring out what phones this device was actually close to because that's a, that would be another oh, yeah. huge security <laughs> breach there is, in fact, and this is to There'll prevent be a class tracking. action so fast. There is, in yeah. fact, to keep somebody from, say, slipping an air tag into your purse or, or and track you, there is, in fact, a warning when there is an air tag uh, near you, a notification. But uh, only if you have an iPhone. But only if you have an <laughs> yeah. iPhone. 
There's <laughs> so, already people saying Apple flood again. Yeah. But I don't, I'm not sure if this is something that's only enabled when it's under certain modes. Um, like Because if you're not tracking somebody, these things aren't going to be active all the time. They're only going to be active when you actually go and look for them. So I'm hoping that there's some sort of compromise here where they're dormant for the vast majority of time and they wouldn't be a security issue to anybody at all. But the minute you put them into tracking mode, if you're around them, because other people are worried, like what if somebody has an air tag next to them in their wallet and I'm sitting with next to them on the bus, is my iPhone going to put up a warning all of a sudden because there's a, an unknown tracker near me. There's so many little edge cases that Apple is going to have to have figured out, maybe not to announce all at once at the event, but to have documented and at least speak to us on background about uh, to assuage. I think a lot of the, 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 again, the rigmarole that's going to pop up from all this. What do I, mean, I, there's the, what, what do it, I have a UWB chip in? What what devices? Your iPhone, iPhone your iPhone 11, your iPhone 12, uh, your HomePod Mini. Oh, really? Uh, Not home, your big HomePod, yeah, but the Mini. That's what lets it do. No, that's what lets it do that that cool hand oh, yeah, off yeah. thing where you bring your iPhone close to it and it shakes because yeah. it knows the proximity. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I believe that's it so far, although we're all hoping the Apple TV gets it in the update because everybody wants spatial audio. Now that we've had a taste for it, we all want everything to act like a speaker, not a headphone anymore. So everyone wants that on the Apple TV. Uh, one more thing. The Apple Watch Series 6 has a U1 chip in it. Yes. So uh, basically, I'm carrying an uh, AirTag on my wrist at all times, which is very interesting. Yes. Fair. Well, and, that's and, why Lisa doesn't worry about losing you, Leo. Yeah, she's never going to lose me. <laughs> well, and, and one of the one of the things to go back to Actually, what Andy was talking more properly, about. she's never going to lose my Apple Watch. She might lose the person who's <laughs> supposed to be. Leo's on. Apple Watch is fine. I don't know what you're all worried about. The Apple Watch is. <laughs> Sorry, great. Alex. Go ahead. No, I was going to say to you know the, the things that we don't know uh, that the Andy started to go down the path of is is you know I I grew up in the country. If someone took our stuff, we wouldn't call the police. You know, like, like yeah, you, know, like, you just you got you know, a like, you know, and so, I know. Yeah. So so the so the thing is is that. The, the the ability to you know i've had situations where someone stole one of our laptops you know at a, at a show right and we have software in the in the laptop that we just know where it is we can look at it yeah. <laughs> we can look at the screen it's low i knew yeah i knew who that person was i knew where they lived i knew the fact that they were divorced i knew that their kid lives in two different spots i knew that the, the three businesses that they that they've had Jeez. i knew everything about that person because they stole my laptop and I just let them have it for a year, you know? <laughs> and, oh and, my God. And, and because, because, because the thing is, is that, is that interacting with them. That's probably illegal, gonna, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, please. No, <laughs> Consider no, no, local I, laws before you harass people. <laughs> I didn't harass anybody. I didn't, I didn't do anything. I never interacted with them. Oh. You know, so, so I didn't, so. Uh, what did you do? The, How did you torture them? I didn't torture them at all. I, they still have my laptop. Oh. I didn't do anything. Oh, you just no, knew no, all What I'm that. saying is. But you didn't use it against them but you could have i didn't use any of it you no, know because the, you. the thing is is that it's just that i i could you know you with them with the meraki stuff that we have i could just see on the map where they were yeah, yeah. you know and then you just do a search and then it, yeah. it just the, actually the problem with it the being internet. apple is that they probably uh, a smart th uh, thief would figure out how to turn it off the meraki stuff they didn't even think about so right right no the meraki stuff is in, in base layer right yeah. so so the you could you could anyway so so anyway, so the issue was is that I chose not to have an interaction because I knew that the police aren't going to do anything about right. an Air, a, a, a MacBook Air. No. They're not going to. They're not going to. To Andy's point, they're not yeah. going to do it. Now, I'm not, and it wasn't worth creating a an interaction. You know, I just made the you know the choice. We're just going to write that, you know, write that laptop off. Yeah. You know, and and um, and so uh, so that's the the but but there will be people who won't do that, right? You know, there, there'll be people who. Well, are upset about losing start, their their something yeah, smaller. Start than the that. timer because there will be people that they, they, they did it with Find My iPhone who will track it down. You know, they'll go right into the den of thieves, yeah, and that right. is and not have a safe. A they'll be artists. They'll want to have a confrontation. This. Yeah, that's yeah. not a good thing to do. Don't no. do that. Well, we, we've all, we've already seen how bad that can be. Remember yeah. the the, uh, the the data location data that uh, that a lot of different these finding services were subscribing to. Their default was if we don't know where if we can't figure out where this thing is, we will simply we have to have we have to re respond something or else the the software crashes. So we're just going to pick the geographical center of the United States of America. Right. And as a result, this, this poor this, people this, in this, Kansas. This house kept getting like people with guns. <laughs> Like, hey, you got my phone. You have my phone. You have my phone, <laughs> and worse. So there, there just there are just so many really interesting aspects of this. The the, the, the but the the last thing, and this is this is I'm co completely open to speculation that uh, this is a, a natural place to use a CR twenty thirty two battery. This tiny little like dime size ubiquitous battery that can run these low energy things for like a whole year. But the question is, is Apple going to 
be so focused on, gee, we don't want to be creating something that uses a disposable battery that they're going to do something that's rechargeable because I don't see how, I don't see how they could do it. But I also see Apple at least investigating how they can avoid using disposable uh, disposable batteries in an Apple product. Yeah. Uh, that couple, by the way, who lived in that Kansas uh, farmhouse, yeah. 600 million IP addresses pointed to their, because it's the geographic center <laughs> of the United States, <laughs> yeah. people would leave old toilets in their driveway. They would do all sorts of things. Cops came to their house because everything, and this was all because of one IP location company, MaxMind. They ended up suing them um, because um, if MaxMind couldn't figure out what an IP address was, they'd put it in this Kansas <laughs> farmhouse. Um so. That, that's, that's not a privacy first decision, is it? Yeah, no. <laughs> that, that's not a, hey, nothing bad can come with this. And we just report yeah. that we don't we don't know where it is, but we're going to definitively give you an address anyway. Here's the uh, here's the broken toilet left in their driveway for no apparent reason. <laughs> just, well, maybe, maybe, the, maybe the toilet had like a, a tile tracker on it. And the person <laughs> found it by the side of the road and thought they were doing something nice by returning it. Uh, anyway, uh, we you might wonder how how come we keep saying air tags? Why why do maybe Apple will call it something else? Well, Apple kind of leaked this back in April of uh, 2020. They uploaded a tech support video uh, for Find My iPhone and <laughs> accidentally left this text in. Offline finding enables this device and air tags to be found when not connected to Wi-Fi or cellular. Um, never, you know. So now they could change that, but I think they're They've kind of committed to air tags for more than a year. Um, there's air tags. This doesn't have the same ring. No, <laughs> air tags is pretty good. There's <laughs> patents. There's uh, pictures of uh, accessories. Accessories. I mean, I can't wait till Andy gets his Gucci air tags keychain and just lords it over me like he does so many things. I love it that Nomad. No, no, is you'll, 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 have your, you'll, have your it. you'll have your Hermes one before I do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh so, God, it's gonna oh. They found another way to extract all my money from me. Oh, oh I didn't even think of that. It's your new AirTag case. You got to have one. Oh, uh, do we know what the track. price will be? No, but do you want to speculate? It'll be expensive. It's going to be expensive. I mean, of course <laughs> it's, it's Apple. Because you're you going to have to buy the AirTag. Then you're going to have to buy the wallet thing or the keychain thing or the, like, it'll work really well and it'll be really expensive. So I don't need to put one on my phone or my watch. Uh, I would love it if you're right. The new Apple TV, certainly, if they are going to announce an Apple TV, which apparently is a part of the rumor. Um, yeah. They would release a, a, a remote that has you, you, you. That's a cheap chip, right? The U1 chip. It's small enough to put yeah, in a watch. Yeah. It's Apple's version of a commodity chip. Yeah. Uh, so you'd buy it for your keys, your backpack. I mean, I think, I think again, your, Mustang, your kids, your laptop, your kids. I mean, I think that everything Apple makes should have one in it because, again, if someone takes yeah, your yeah. laptop, they have to. You, you could put it in the laptop in a way Absolutely. that you'd have to basically disassemble and ruin yes, the, it's the, the value of the computer. Yes. Oh, but yes. would Alex want them in every one of his audio and video components so that they would all oh, know yeah. the position of each of them and could perfectly balance themselves to every scenario he puts them in? <laughs> well, well, the the main thing is is that we 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 talk to a lot of tracking companies about that because when we work at facilities, we're worried that our gear is going to walk off, and so having that have you know having perimeter like we looked at putting trackers inside of our atem switchers and because there's a lot of space in there and a lot of those and you could put one in on the inside of it and it just was that they the battery life wasn't long enough the the um you know there, there was a bunch of issues with those things but you know as this progresses there's a lot of really interesting things when those trackers are really accurate because they might know uh what there's a whole bunch of things your luggage gets lost and they know where your luggage is so they the um, you uh, you'll know whether all the gear that you came with that kit kit like literally in the case what you put in it is all there you know um, and and taking it out and so there's a lot of places where um, if we really get accurate tracking there's a lot of good. things that we can because if you mix I was thinking of something the, else like the yeah. The, a lot of people are super interested because right now the HomePod minis have U1 chips in. And if there's an update of the HomePod biggies with U1 chips and the Apple TV has a U1 chip and they have all of this acoustic measurement technology already in them, the computational um, spatial awareness, you just drop those things in your house and you get perfect Dolby Atmos without having to know a damn thing about Dolby Atmos. And if you start adding that to all the other, like your phone and all the positions, it knows where you are in the room as well. Just the idea for self-configuration to me is incredibly exciting. Yeah, there's, 
um, my, my, my house, I, I've been thinking about that a lot because my house has a lot of speakers in it. A lot of different rooms have different, <laughs> different speakers. And I've been, I'm shocked. I've been thinking, I'm waiting for Halloween because there's like, I have like, uh, there's probably, um, almost 30 speakers total Wow. Uh, thir- because there's 10, 10 stereo spaces, one, five, one, one, seven, one, or one, seven, two. You have and, 10 um, surround sound stereo setups. No, 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 no. Just 10 stereo. Just 10 stereo, not surround sound. There's two surround. There's one that's oh. in my office and then one in the Why do you have 10 room. stereos in your house? <laughs> it, 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 not, they're not stereos. They're in the walls. They're just a pair oh, of Oh, I see. In, they're, in they're, uh, they're for each room. And like like yeah, Sonos, and so can, like I do with the Sonos. Yeah. I, there's, there, there's a whole bunch of... I have uh, 10 Sonuses. Um, and oh, and, and so they... So they um, but I'm looking at replacing those with Dante and... Um, and, uh, you know, a bunch of, uh, anyway, so a bunch of, bunch of stuff, but one of the things that I've been thinking about is the fact that I could, with all these speakers in the house, I could make the, for Halloween, I could make the ultimate haunted house because oh, I'm, yeah. I'm just tough coming from all the different speakers. Oh, yeah. And so by, by getting out of the Sonos and putting them into a central, uh, audio management, um, I can, you know, do a lot more. And I think, you know, Apple could obviously to rainy age point do a lot of really interesting That's things. That's actually why I was disappointed up what, cause I thought the AirPod uh, air, uh, the HomePod Minis would follow me around, but you have to do it man. You have to say, yes, move it over here. I mean, step by step, Leo. It would be so nice if they just, as I walked around the house, the room came alive. I bet yeah. Alex is figuring so out a way so to do that. So you would get a button to enable this, and then Lisa would get a button to disable it because yeah, right. she found it annoying. No, so she, like, she would love it because she, she listens to a book, and as she walks around the house, the book would follow yeah. but her. But who right? wins? Yeah. But who wins <laughs> when you're both home? Well, I, let me just t- put it this way. There's a lot. I, before I even try to get uh, my Amazon Echo to read me a book, I'll say, Echo, switch accounts. Because I know it's going to be in Lisa's account. I know it is. <laughs> Let's take a break. Lots more in the rumor mill. See, we don't need news. We just need rumors. It's better than news. Lots more. Yeah, because we're not, we're, not, we're not constrained by the facts. Yes. <laughs> we can't and possibly be wrong. I got to do an unboxing because I just got this in the mail from Ford. I don't know what it is. For because I you know I bought a Mustang Mach-E first edition and I got a box in the mail. So what That's is awesome. it? We'll find out. <laughs> the suspense is killing me. The tease. Oh, I don't. I don't. I, I don't want to make you feel bad. But you ever heard of that scam like on Alibaba, AliExpress, where like you buy oh. they get a good deal on like chairs and then they send it to you and it's actually like dollhouse chairs. If this maybe is, you just bought like a model. If this is the Mach E, <laughs> I'll be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> but it's made of gold, Leo. It's made of gold. It's really small. And it's got a it's it's got a, a, a NFT connected to actually, it. Actually, I already got the car, so I'm I'm good on uh, that. This is something. Okay. So this is just a bonus. This yes. is. Apparently a reward for buying the first edition, I guess. They didn't mention this when I bought it, but uh, given how expensive it was, I probably deserve something. Maybe some gold driving gloves. I don't know. Our show, <laughs> our show today brought to you by Zip Recruiter. If, I, if you are hiring, and I guess, you know, I just saw the job report, jobs report uh, for uh, February, and I think, what was it, 349,000 new jobs were slowly coming back, right? If you're one of those wonderful companies, we love you, that is hiring, that is that is bringing people back in as we slowly come back after the pandemic, you need to know about Zip Recruiter. It's the best way to hire. It's the way, you know, when we were hiring, the way we used to hire. In fact, a number of our employees came through Zip Recruiter. Here's why we use it. Let me explain why it's so great. You know, it's finding, you know, I guess the preface is the people you hire are are vital to your company. It's the most probably the most important single thing you do in a company is is hire because those people are what the company's made of. They're the the they're the raw materials. Great employees transform a company. An employee who's not so great can bring it right down. Steve Jobs always said that. Hire a employees, hire the you know, hire the best. ZipRecruiter helps you do that because first of all, you're casting the widest Net. I mean, finding a great employee might feel like I'm I'm looking for a needle in a haystack, but well, when you post to ZipRecruiter, it goes to more than a hundred job sites and social networks with one click. So immediately you are spreading that search as widely as possible. But the other thing that's great about it, you might say, well, that's not good. I'm going to get hundreds of applications. My my email is going to be jammed. My phone's never going to stop ringing. No, no, no. It all goes into the ZipRecruiter interface. And the ZipRecruiter interface is great because it reformats all the resumes so they're easy for you to scan. You can have screening questions, true, false, multiple choice. So you can really narrow it down to people who are right for the job, eliminate people who just aren't right for the job. The best thing ZipRecruiter does is completely unique. They have a matching technology. 
that finds people with the right skills and experience for the job you just posted and actively invites them to apply. So while other services might overwhelm you with, you know, at job applications to sift through, ZipRecruiter finds what you're looking for, that needle in the haystack, and brings it to you. In fact, ZipRecruiter is so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. And I will vouch for that. We got it within the first hour. It was mind-boggling. I was sitting there we, at breakfast. Lisa said our, our, our bookkeeper's leaving, which meant she was going to have to do it. And that's always a problem when you're hiring. It means more work for you, right? I said, post it on ZipRecruiter. Within an hour, she's going, wow, we get this, this candidate's great. And another one, another one, another one. Right now, you can try ZipRecruiter free at ZipRecruiter.com slash MacBreak. ZipRecruiter.com slash M-A-C-B-R-E-A-K. You know how to spell it. It's the smartest way to hire ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter.com slash MacBreak. Thank you so much for supporting MacBreak Weekly. Uh, ZipRecruiter. And thank you for supporting MacBreak Weekly, dear listener, for going to ZipRecruiter.com slash MacBreak. If you're hiring, thank you. Country needs you. And uh, don't forget to do it right the right way. Now, we had Alex Lindsay on um, on Twit on Sunday, and he kept leaving. He's done it again during commercials. His excuse Sunday was he was making pizza dough, and he had to, he had to go every break to What's punch it today sourdough to punch down the dough. So I can't wait to find out what he's doing. Well, while he's gone, let me just open up this. Uh, this Did he bring enough pizza for everybody on Sunday, Leo? No. Darn it, I'll have to ask him what? How, how it went. He has one of those uni uh, pizza ovens. They're the best pizza ovens. I have no. one, too. You know he does. Of course he does. He's got all the <laughs> all the cooking stuff. So this is a, blame this Lori is a Gill very Apple-like so Apple box. Yeah, it's all Lori Gill's fault. Very Apple-like <laughs> box. What's here is a card. Oh, look. Mm. Ooh, pretty. What's in here? Is it a note? Is it a thank you note? Congratulations. Welcome to the Mustang family. Wait a minute. What's this? Fractal Pony Assembly. Oh, there's my VIN. I guess I don't have to hide the VIN because... Uh, no, you it's, should. Should I? But it's in the windshield. Anybody who finds the car can, can see it. I don't know what well, to do they, with this. Oh, this... I just hide everything by default. It's a plaque. Oh, maybe it goes with whatever's in here. Let's see. You think I should hide that? Ooh. Well, you, you should maybe you shouldn't share it with like the entire world. People who, <laughs> you, you have to you have to show it to people who are actually in proximity with the car. Yeah, that's true. You don't have a choice. Look at that. It's a fractal oh. a fractal 3D. It's 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 low poly Mustang. It's like yes. PS2 Mux Mustang. Yes, PLA, PLA Mustang. It's From the uh, Star Fox universe. Oh, I see. That's what this is for. So this has the VIN on it, and then you put it on this stand. <laughs> Okay, that's that's. And then you skin it. You can get texture maps for I it. I guess that's nice. Hide the hide the VIN. That's kind of cool. IRL texture map. Actually, I posted the VIN on a on a Maki forum, so I don't. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I know. What are they going to do with it though? Right. Maybe that's also the remote I, control code, Leo. Now everyone's going to be driving your car. <laughs> it's, it's there is it's a password. <laughs> There, there are too many people who quote the art of war without actually like reading it. Yeah. But one of the things that always makes sense is the ba basic principle is deny your enemy information. That's good. Good. Yes. Good, good point. All right. That's, that's a good security. <laughs> Which Mach-E did you get, Leo? The first edition. That's why it says first edition. And uh -huh. I only got that because I wanted to get it before uh, the minute it was available. <laughs> it's very nice. It's very nice. I'm ha I'm a fan. Do you have chargers? Do you have a, pl a plethora of chargers available to you? Uh, yes, because it uses uh, CCS Fast Charging, which is Electrify America. Nice. And as part of the deal, after Volkswagen got caught with Dieselgate, uh, part <laughs> part of the many things they had to do to make up for it, uh, they um, built, they're spending a billion dollars to put chargers all over um, the country, fast chargers. Take and there's one across on. the street from my house. Not that I need it. Nice. <laughs> but the outlet mall has three different companies are doing chargers because you know we I live in Petaluma, the the town that banned gas stations, so they better damn well put those chargers. In. <laughs> Can't run a car on eggs. Yeah, yeah. All right, sorry, that's not, that's not very Mackish of me, but I just I, the box came and I had to open it and I apologize. <laughs> we were vamping for Alex. Yeah, what were you doing, Alex? I I just needed some tea. <laughs> oh, because I I mentioned <laughs> I wasn't making bread again. <laughs> I mentioned uh, yes, exactly the pizza dough. How did that pizza come out for, on Sunday? Oh, it came out really well. Oh, man. Yeah, it was good. It was did a good Did you bring for good... all of us, Alex? I ate it. Sorry. We ate it. The oh. family ate it. I love yeah, that uni oven. That's a really great oven. And 
Yeah. Thank you, Lori yeah. Gill, for suggesting it. <laughs> yeah. That's really good. All right. There you yeah, go. The, See? Look at that. It's uh it's wonderful. Oh, it's pretty. I'll put it right here. It's a three D. It's kinda of, I feel like this is the kind of thing Alex Lindsay would do. Now you can come and take a picture of it and print, yes. print hundreds of them. <laughs> Uh, so air tags. I think we I think we covered air tags in as much depth as anybody would care. I believe so. Awesome. What do we know about the um, AirPods? The new AirPods. Third generation AirPods will have the same design apparently as AirPods Pro, but they will not have the noise cancellation and transparency modes. So if you were one of the people that Johnny I've modeled that pure silicon that pure plastic tip on then you will have to give that up and go in ear like the rest of us poor, i prefer that the songs. softer the softer nicer ear the silicone ear some right? people hate the stuff going into their ear though and i worry oh. that they're now out of luck like, there's always somebody's going to be upset by any decision leo um okay so that would they what would they call those just third generation airpods yeah Air, yeah airpods 3 yeah. and then the airpods pro are supposed to be getting a no stem design at some point uh to keep Oh, that's right. To keep our FOMO as high as possible. Yes. It's just a way of selling more of those. Um, yeah. iPad Pro were due. They did to do a they did a 12, only a 12.9 inch iPad Pro uh, in 2020. And the only new thing really on that besides the A14 chip was the uh, LiDAR. There, was, there wasn't even A14. I, it was A12Z and had the oh. eighth graphics core because the yield rates were up, so it had the eighth graphics core fully functional. So it was a minor difference. Uh, and they had some better memory bandwidth, and right. it had the light, yeah, it had the LiDAR sensor on it, and it had a wide-angle camera, so the, the camera system was better. It didn't, um, and it didn't, uh, they didn't offer an 11-inch either, right? Just the 12.9. I think they did, I, and I think they all went to six gigabytes of memory. It was the other, because previously only the okay. highest storage tier, the one terabyte, was six gigabytes. So it was a, minor, all six a minor upgrade. What I presume that we'll see a newer chip. Yeah, an A14 or something, right? A14X, which should be very similar to an M1. Uh, and wow. My, so my, I have questions. My que well, the M1 is basically an A14X chip, the same what we'd expect to have in those cores, but with the additional Mac stuff like virtualization and um, emulation. But also what I'm hoping for is that they have onboard two onboard super fast Thunderbolt controllers. And now that the iPad Air has USB-C, I would love the iPad Pro to get Thunderbolt so that you know, I can attach my, my SSD drive, my Samsung yeah. Blazing Fast SSD <gasps> drive, and get some real Whoa. throughput on video going into the iPad. That would be pretty Fingers cool. Cried. I feel like they won't do it just so that I have something to be disappointed about. But man, I'm It will also be the first, uh, Apple's supposedly moving to mini LED screens. This would be the yeah. first mini LED screen. Is that right? That's the rumor. Alex, yeah, what, the is mini LED, that is, what does mini LED do for me? I presume you know about this. Um, I think I, I actually don't know as much about it. I know a lot about OLED. <laughs> but but uh, mini LED, I think, is from the LCD is going to... Um, Smaller backlights. More, yeah, because yeah, it's, it's a local it's dimming zone. full array local yeah. dimming. And because they're yeah. smaller LEDs... They're mini. It'll be. I, I believe that you're going to get richer <laughs> blacks, um, which we, which you notice on the current iPad is not as rich as right. the phones, for instance. Yeah, you'd get um, a higher so. contrast ratio, better HDR, yeah. in other words. Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So Without might, the drawbacks of OLED on bigger panels, which are still things like it has issues with great with contiguous brightness at iPad size and uh, yield rates. There's battery like issues with OLED. There's uh, burning issues with burning OLED. Issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And. Uh, uh, Pulse width modulation on low brightness levels, which some people hate. And it's, of course, more expensive. So I can see why they might want to find a, an alternate technology. Um, not well, quite, what mini LED quite pricing OLED, is going to be like at this point. Yeah. So, so, so Air, was there anything else that they would put in this to make it more pro than a faster chip? And a, and a better screen? I mean, Maybe could, that's enough. You could, you could theoretically improve the, the LiDAR. I mean, really? You know, um, denser, uh, more power than the phone. It's I mean, pretty that, clear the LiDAR in both the iPhone 12 and the iPad Pro uh, is really Apple's way of testing something for future, right? For their AR but The glasses. iPad Pro is terrible. Like they, they didn't hook it into anything. Like when the iPhone came out, that LiDAR system was hooked into everything. And with the iPad, they didn't hook it in. Like it, if you press the button for portrait mode, it switches you to the front facing camera, which is the worst Apple, exp like it's just a completely un-Apple like experience because they didn't bother to hook it in to give you portrait mode on the back. And my guess was that they didn't have time. They were so busy working on the iPhone 12 camera system. They didn't have it ready. And then as soon as that 
came out iOS 14 would update and give us all that capability on iPad. And, and it never did. Yeah. So I don't know if there's to Alex's point, a hardware deficiency there or a difference, but just getting parity with, with LiDAR on the yeah. iPhone would be huge at this and, point. And, and it I, don't think be, that, I don't think that it, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Andy. Uh, uh, well, actually, there's a, there's a, a new thing that a, a different thing. So maybe you should finish your thought. Well, all I was going to say is that that the I don't think it's just testing. It's it is uh, it's not really testing the market as much as um, filling the market. So as you as AR gets bigger, what you don't want to do is have only the people who bought it on the last rev have access to the new tools. So by having lidar incorporated into everything over time, it means that. You know, when you're talking to partners, you can say, well, there's 65 million people or 100 million people or 250 million people that already have this technology built in. And we've seen that with other rollouts with Apple where they say, and your phone has already had this, you know, <laughs> so, so the, uh, so the, so that way they can, over time, they may not have the technology ready because there's this whole thing of you put something out and if it's not seen as successful, then everyone stops working on it. They're like, okay, that was a waste of time. Google has this problem all the time. And so by, by, by flushing that whole market and building that out, I mean, I think what we're really seeing is an incredibly systematic, uh, like the, the, in the same way that the M1 was just, you know, probably a decade of rollout, the what we're seeing here is a really slow rollout of AR. Yeah. Where you're you're basically, you know, plowing all the fields and carefully seeding all the fields. And it's not some kind of like, oh, let's just throw it out and see if it works. It's definitely a really heavy commitment. And by the time it they really start doing and they're and they're, you know, giving the developers AR tools and they're giving them things to play with and they're giving them, you know, building it all out. But I think that because I think that AR is probably going to be massive but it it needs that kind of uh environment uh to to grow into because it is something very new and uh, by the time they get to it a lot will be out there okay that's kind of what i was thinking i mean that's what's in a way that's what's really impressive about the apple machine is that they're able to you know because they don't tell people well, they don't do big beta releases they didn't do what google did with the google glass Probably right. wisely, given the reception Google Glass ended up getting, <laughs> they they but they do be, I believe sneak these things out as you said and uh, slowly incrementally develop this stuff so that when the time comes they have a lot of experience using it and I guess that's probably right. what'll happen with this lighter. What could be improved? Um, range range and resolution. It, it so, goes I mean, pretty far now. What how how many th feet? Thirty feet. Thirty feet's pretty good. Yeah, it is. I, I've already had places where I wish it went about fifty. You'd like it to um, do the so, whole room, in other words. You like well. To so there's there's a bunch of things about it that are some of them are hardware and some of them are software. Having it be a little bit more powerful, so it went out a little further, would be really useful. Uh, also, having a little bit more density uh, as it captures would be great. Um, one of the things that in software that we haven't really seen that I think is going to end up coming. Number one is is a um, is the either the developers or Apple getting better at understanding reasonable persistence of the 3D data. So right now, it's very, basically, that mesh just keeps changing with, as you move your phone, and it's, and the, um, there's not much pers persistence of those 3D points. Um, now, develop, some developers are just grabbing onto those points and caching them all the time. And then what you end up with is there's just a lot of junk data because so you have to get into this point where I'm grabbing points and keeping the ones that matter that have a lot of that I have a lot of um, reliability, you know, of knowing that those points are really there. And as I work with it, I want it to keep on getting more data, like keep on refining that data, not rewriting it. And so right now, the LiDAR is rewriting it all the time. And so you can't get the high resolution. If I'm scanning, you know, this little switcher, so I grab, you know, I grab this little switcher and I just get a certain amount of data. I want to get closer and have it keep on, you know, filling in more data around the, around the pieces if I want to grab that model. Uh, the other side of that is also photogrammetry, and I think it's either Apple providing that to the developers or or the developers taking more advantage of it. Because what I want to do is take this, and as I move around it, take photos of those. I know exactly where that camera is because of the LiDAR, and I know what camera it is because it's all on the same device. Now I can mix the quality and the resolution of the image to the LIDAR's accuracy. So that's mixing what we call um, structured and unstructured light. The structured light being the LIDAR and the unstructured light being the photos. And when you combine those two, your ability to, to basically capture incredibly high resolution models becomes you know, much easier to manage. Now, if you take that and you combine it with um, USDZ, which Apple has you know, put into motion in Final Cut and it's in the operating system and they they've been talking about it for a couple of years, 
you're talking about the ability to basically the new photograph, quote unquote, is a 3D model, you know, from your, from your phone, from your iPad, where you can literally, I can take a, if I want to show someone this, I can take a picture of it and I can send it to them and they can put it into their presentation you know, and ro rotate it around, or it can be in a presentation where I just click on it. Like if you go to the Apple's website right now and go USDZ samples, you'll see things. And when you click on those on the web page, it pops out in front of you and it will pop out to scale, you know, with the, with the, um, if you have an, an iPhone with LiDAR. And so, so you're, you know, the, if you think about why, you know, Amazon, for instance, being able to look at any object in Amazon and click on it and have it pop out on your table in front of you and have you be able to rotate it around and have it be able to annotate um, how, you know, all those things are, it's going to come to all the platforms, but Apple's probably got the ability to um, put it all together a little bit more effectively than everybody else at the moment. And so, um, so, but that it's an incredible mix of, of all of these technologies that are all, that all feel like they're coming together at a, at a point sometime in the next couple of years. Andy, you said you wanted to start a new topic. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I meant no, uh, on the, on, on the iPad that, uh, obviously 5g on the iPad pro would be an awesome thing. Oh, of course I'll have 5g. The only question is whether the CEO of Verizon will show up. Yeah, he'll, he'll tell Hopefully. you to, no. He'll tell you to turn it Hopefully off, not. and then they'll delete the tweet. Yeah, isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? <laughs> well, the uh, Verizon support said, "Yeah, uh, what do they what do they say for better battery turn life?" Turn off five G to pre yeah. <laughs> they didn't say turn off five G. They said turn on LTE. Yes, yeah, switch yeah. to LTE. Yeah, um, which of course turns off five state of five G in America. <laughs> Sorry, Leo. Uh, <laughs> it is unfortunately. Um, so good. I think uh, it'd be interesting to see new iPad Pro. Uh, yeah, that, a new camera, anything different in the cameras? They seem to incrementally improve the cameras yeah. a little bit. They did last year. Yep. Never as and good they have as more an room. iPhone, always better than the last iPad. Yeah. yeah they've I mean, they have, a, they yeah. have enough room there in processing. It's it's kind of a bummer that they don't make those just incredible cameras. You can do the Ansel Adams yeah. thing where the, it's like the you know, big, <laughs> big image. And if you they could, could just you could figure out the zone system, I'd be it's happy. Just, it's bill of goods for them. Like they, they don't want to... A more expensive camera makes the iPad more expensive. And they yeah. already think it's expensive, so they just weigh everything that they can put into it for that price. Yeah, but it bumps I still think answer. that I just wish they had like with the iPhone. You know, they just have this like we're not going to worry about the price as much. You know, on the top end, and we're just going to do what we need to do to yeah, just do like yeah, the one like the iPad Pro Pro, the Pro Plus, yeah, iPad <laughs> iPad Pro Max Extreme. <laughs> but it, you know, but Black be, Magic has this. They have the A10 Mini, the A10 Mini Pro, and the A10 Mini Extreme. Yeah. So it could be the iPad for people Extreme. who have more money than sense. Here's the ultra. Here's like we had money, no constraints. Like we said to the designers, yeah. just this is the form factor. What can you do? We said, what could we do with no constraints? What no iPad constraints. could we like? Wow. But wouldn't, wouldn't it be even cooler I mean, if you have if you have an i if you have a, an iPhone 12 Pro and you have an iPad Pro to be able to use the iPad Pro integrated with the phone as a viewfinder? Like even if yep. a if you just if you want to like put this thing on a tripod and and be uh, use the uh, the iPad Pro as a controller and also as an image preview, but also imagine an i an iPad case that actually used the iPod, the iPhone as an accessory, so you would have that incredible, wonderful iPhone quality uh, camera. Because I don't, right. it's 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 weird when you think about how Apple is trying to sell the iPad Pro in a world in which they now have, now they've actually demonstrated an interest in continuing the the Macintosh moving forward. It's it's it would be great to have Thunderbolt on this device, but at what point does Apple have a problem explaining why you would want to get a Mac instead of an iPad versus? keeping the price of the iPad Pro to a level where you can get the best one available for about as much as the cheapest possible MacBook. And it's just, it's going to be the most elegant and wonderful experience for people who absolutely want an iPad. I don't know how Thunderbolt would actually do that. Well, I, I feel like that if, if Apple can sell you can a $3,000 iPad, if Apple thinks that they can sell you a three thousand dollar iPad, you know, <laughs> they they just should. Like it's it's to them it's just hard. Ceramic or with they, gold accents. <laughs> well, no, but I think that if you start putting in you know really high resolution cameras and you know I I do think that we'll probably see better support for keyboard and mouse and and other things like that because I think they are you know there there is this merger going on between the two. Uh, in fact, I think that at some point the iPad will pass the Air and other things because you'll have a touch screen and a and all the other things that you want, you know, a modular, whether you want to use a keyboard or not, and a mouse. And so you have pretty most close of the, now. Yeah, the I agree. Yeah. So we're, there's some point where the iPad just becomes better than the low end MacBooks, you know, and then, 
Um, you know, it's, it's a different experience. If you really want your laptop experience, you can have it. Um, some of the more powerful Macs will be still a reason to use them. But I think that I think that at some point the iPad becomes the MacBook MacBook Air. So the front-facing camera right now, on the current the latest iPad Pro, is in the wrong place. Yes. Besides being yes, it is in the wrong <laughs> place. I again with my mom, love her, but she's always looking at yeah, me. Yeah, it's wicked side eye. It's unintentional wicked side eye. Yeah, and so I never and and I and I've tried, but I give up. You know, mom, the camera's there. It's on the side there. Where is the camera? I don't see it. Well, it's black dot. You can't see it. But put your thumb over the left side across, and she'll do that and say, that's where the camera is. And for about five minutes, she'll look at that, and then she'll go back to looking at the screen. And so, It shouldn't be her problem. It's they, not. Apple should, like, they've been making these keyboards for five years, six years now. Yeah. So uh, I guess someday they'll have a through-the-screen camera, and then it could be right smack dab in the middle, which is probably the only good spot for it. But I'm given... The I think the iPad might be the perfect, you know, video meeting device. I'm going to defer to Alex on this. He's the king of Zoom. Uh, it can't be put a ca good camera in. If you put a I good mean, camera in, wouldn't you know, it be like what everybody would want to use for school, for work, for meetings? Uh, it is. the. I mean, the hard part is, is that, that uh, if you're really serious about meetings, you don't use Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi. Oh, you know, there you go. You the need Ethernet. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so you true. end up with, you know, and we, we get a lot of people that we just did an event last week and. And it had two people on iPads, and there's a couple problems. One is is that Zoom has a bug where they don't they take the whole sensor, not the they don't crop in a little bit the way Skype does and FaceTime and everything else. So you end up with this weird, you know, pillaring that goes on with anybody on an iP on an, an i on an iPad, right? Um, and then you know the resolution of the camera is just okay, and then Wi-Fi breaks it up, and and so it is. I mean, it's convenient to kind of walk around and set it down and and, and work with it. And I think that you, to your point, you could do better. At, Apple would probably do better if they actually made FaceTime usable, but you know, um, FaceTime's really great at just kind of like a casual. I want to talk to one on one with folks. Yeah, I use, I use the iPad for FaceTime, but that's but, why my mom's always looking side eye. But, <laughs> yeah, but there's no, but there's no, con, there's no good controls, and the yeah. the group chat thing is a disaster. Like yeah, just, yeah, just completely unusable. So that's something opinion. Apple could look at, though, given the world we live in. Um, I have. This is from Pluggable. This is the dong my dongle. I actually was going through my dongles just to see. This dongle has Ethernet on it. So I I presume I could use Ethernet mm -hmm. with my iPad. It also has Absolutely. Yeah. And we use we use Ethernet with our iPads all the time. And you it can has do HDMI. it. HDMI. It has a bunch of This actually is a great dongle. I should make it's it a great dongle. Of the week. Yeah, because it has everything yeah. on it. Um, including an SD card reader. Nice. So, yeah, that turns kind of, you put something like you that can. on an iPad Pro, that's pretty impressive. And you can The hard part is, is that Apple keeps on selling us on the fact that we just, do, we can just do it with wirelessly. Yeah, we don't can. need a bunch of things. Yeah. And, and the reality is, is that, you know, um, yeah, Wi-Fi. Does Wi-Fi 6 for, solve that a little it's bit? It's fragile. Is it better? Wi-Fi 6E, what is the better one? Wi-Fi 6E that goes is to the 6 new one. gigahertz? Yeah, but I think that'll it, that's clean not up the issue. It's, the issue is it's collision based, right, Alex? That uh, at least that's the issue I think we pinpointed. I it, mean, the the what we you know from folks that we've talked to, the, the real problem is, is that the APs are just really chatty. They they talk with literally every device yes. that they can see, and they're and so the so everything that walks in and out. So like for instance, if I'm at my parents' house, I actually get great Wi-Fi and I don't have any problems because not a lot of things are going in and out of the the Wi-Fi zone. It's just when you're in any kind of congested area where there's a lot of other APs, there's a lot of other devices, or and we have more and more devices doing this, they're constantly talking to all those devices and just dropping packets. Now, when you're surfing, you don't notice it at all, but in synchronous video where, you know, you're at less than 200 milliseconds, you, you just lose frames, you know, and that's what, so there's this kind of constant um, dropping of frames and dropping of uh, packets that, that's going on that, you know, a lot of people don't notice, but it's kind of one of those things that there's a lot of things you may not notice that make you uncomfortable. <laughs> you know? So, so it's, it, it, it's part of what drags down video conferencing is Wi-Fi. Such an opportunity, um, I think for the iPad, uh, because it's, yep. because the form factor, it's light. It's, um, well, if you look at like the, the, the possibility of being able to really share your camera with someone, but then also being able to share objects with each other and, annotate the things and, and look at those things in real time. And there's a lot of places that we could have really interesting interactions with each other that not, none of the tools are supporting right now. Um, and 
uh, it'd be easy for it wouldn't be easy, but it would be something that Apple could has a unique position to do um, that hopefully that they they take they take seriously. Yeah. I don't think they really understand video conferencing, so I think that's part of the problem. They Alex, understand point you don't point. think anybody understands video conferencing except for the office hours crew, and you're probably right. I mean, <laughs> you're it's, the king of this. You, I mean, you, I think that you I see think, things that no one. I, not to not to diminish your expertise, it's that you're exactly right. But but uh, I wish companies would come to you and say, "What should we do?" Because you you know, well, I think I think you know I think there, there are them. some companies that are doing yes. a pretty good job. I mean, we we get to, we get to talk to a couple of them. Good. So they should they should listen. Here's a guy who's you know on the cutting edge of this stuff, and uh, you know for years. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, one other rumor. I don't know if it's true. Apple TV. <laughs> Will there be an Apple TV in the next few weeks before the end of the month? Renee, what do you think? I hope so. Yeah, I think it's highly likely. I mean, apparently it was ready last year and they, they didn't push it out for a variety of reasons. But I'm mostly curious if they go for the timid upgrade because there's, there's been two rumored versions of it. One is a timid upgrade that would go to an A12X that would let it do better HDR compositing and play Apple Arcade it's games. It's the gaming, and the the other gaming rumor, Apple TV. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I think that one is the conservative Apple TV. That's more of the Apple TV, like the, the TV watching. Uh, Apple Arcade sort of... Um, it's not super demanding. What's the right word? Yeah, not super demanding at all. And the other rumor is that Apple's going to go to an A14X, which would Ooh. raise the price, which I think is a huge concern because Apple's tried doing higher-end Apple TVs internally before, and people were worried that they were too expensive. But any Apple TV is too expensive now. So I would rather Apple either make like a little dongle, like a Fire Stick or a Chrome Cast Stick for people for whom they want to have a low price point, and then make a box that is really interesting, that does... That is an A14X. There's been rumors they're talking to game studios about doing a lot more game support, about maybe bundling in an Apple-designed controller even, and then use it as like that staging device for the VR headsets in the future where they really go oh. into high-quality gaming, high-quality entertainment, education, what? fitness, that sort of stuff. And there's, I'm, I'm really interested to watch the trend of uh, 120 hertz. You know, so, you know, the, you know, where, where there's rumors that the phone this fall will be at 120 uh, frame or you know the the display will be at 120 hertz. That's and the if you start on the screen. Yeah, that's the that's the but it's 120 frames per second, right? So right. we're mostly looking at 30 frames a second in streaming, 60 frames per second for you know gaming. But what if you have a gaming console and a video console and and the phones all able to work at 120 frames a second? Um, now, so far that hasn't been super successful for folks because they because people just aren't used to looking at that and. and People say, oh, that just looks like TV, you know, like when you're watching a film. But the issue is, is that the, it's the way that the TV converts 24 frames a second to, to 120 that really is the problem. Right now, we could shoot 120, but we can't display it anywhere. So with Apple, with what they own right now, I think what's really it, what, the, the spaces that they could affect if they wanted to. And I don't know if Apple's going to do this at all. But if you have a 120 frame per second capable device to put it out to the TV... If you have um, cameras on the phones and the iPads that are able to capture at 120 frames per second, and if you started generating content, and not, I would not say film content, but let's say if you look at the nature content that Apple does, which is the Apple, T that's the best part of Apple TV Plus, in my opinion, is their nature stuff has just been outstanding. Um, if you can imagine a, a device able to do 4K or even 8K at 120 frames a second, um, it may not be this version but if if you if you go down that path, you start creating something that almost nobody else can create. <laughs> like like you know they just and I think that that's where you're going. We're going to keep on seeing Apple go down that path where, you know, we're going to make everybody play games that that only we play well. You know, I feel that's like what there's the warring factions over Apple TV inside Apple. That there's the the, the just a hobby group that doesn't want to do too much, doesn't want to make it too expensive. They look at Roku. It's the less than half an Apple TV, uh, and it's the best seller. And they go, that's where we should be going. We should be going with a low-end consumer product that's wider spread, and especially given Apple's now devotion to services, you want to get Apple TV and Plus in more hands and Arcade in more hands and so forth. And then I figure there is a, a group, probably genetically related to Alex Lindsay, <laughs> who are saying, just think what we could do with this set-top box, if it were five hundred dollars, and you know, I think there's a group of Apple uh, fans who would pay five hundred bucks for a TV box that did I, all those amazing things. I actually think that the, the biggest 
challenge to all of that is that Apple has made, you know, the AirPlay and other things available on the other, on TVs, you know, uh, you know, on, uh, yeah, Apple TV is you know, available on TVs now. And, yeah. and that's actually, if, if anything else, that, that, that's that actually the low kind of, well, the problem is it holds them back because now you have backwards compatibility right. issues, but you could get to a point where, and this would drive the TV manufacturers crazy is you can get 30, 60, 30 or 60 frames a second on those TVs, but if you if it knows that you have 120 frames right. a second, or if it knows those things, it'll just maybe give you it make to a, you an Apple TV Pro or something like that that is a different. Well, I think that was beast. their answer to the Apple TV stick. Like instead of making an Apple TV stick, which I, I, I still wish they'd make because I want to travel with one, they just put that the app. They made the app ubiquitous, and maybe they'll do more of that. But the yeah. the answer to the top end, I don't know if it's still the same. But the rumor was previously like there was a. A, a three years in the desert where there was no new Apple TV hardware before the future of apps or apps. So the future of TV is apps when we got the new Apple TV 4 before the 4K. And you know, it was supposedly Eddie was really interested in it, but there was a layer of middle management yep. that just couldn't come Damn to terms them. with it. Like they figured out, we're going to try a DR, like a D, the DVR box. No, we're going to try a high-end gaming console. No, we're going to try a low-end thing. And they, they just kept not doing what he asked for them to do. And it took cycles and cycles to, to figure out what was wrong and fix it. And finally, they went with what all of us just wanted. And that was like a version of iOS that ran on the TV and let us use all sorts of apps. And they still managed to screw that up by using, by forcing the Siri controller and on-demand resources to all the developers who were going to make apps for them anyway. So I think that was just a huge missed opportunity. And it's, it's unclear if they'll recapture it, but we just saw Microsoft clear the Bethesda transaction today. And Microsoft and Sony are buying up a lot of the game uh, franchises and collateral and everything out there. And if the other rumor is true that Apple is going to get into either like amping up uh, Apple Arcade games, getting Apple Arcade games to the AAA level or investing in studios of their own or properties of their own, then I think that they start to justify that hardware. I don't think they can compete with an Xbox or a PlayStation, even with an A14X, I think it does different things than the AMD SOCs that are in those next generation consoles. But I think it'll start to get them there, especially as they go into more premium entertainment and, and gaming. Actually, I guess the high-end competition right. really is the NVIDIA Shield, uh, which I have and love. Uh, and it's like $300. So it's right kind of in the middle or there. Or just an Xbox and a PlayStation 5. I mean, well, that's the next step really up. Absolutely. Yeah, if you have yeah. an Xbox uh, and you've got a H uh, UHD a DVD player in it. You've got With an Apple TV app on it. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, Alex, have you ever tried the Nvidia Shield? I'm I just, haven't tried it. Yeah, I'm curious I what you would think about yeah. it. Uh, Dolby yeah, Vision, I, Atmos, uh, but it also does uh, what they call AI upscaling uh, to 4K, which actually is kind of interesting. It does a pretty good job, and then of course it's 4K HDR. I don't know what the frame rate. Uh, is of it, but I would imagine, given its cost, it's really a show-off piece for Nvidia for their Tegra chip. It's not. Right. I don't. I doubt they sold more than you know a hundred thousand of them. But uh, those of us who oh. have them love them. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've had the 2017 version for three or four years, and, and they it kept is, upgrading. It has prior to put, That's yeah. the beauty of it. That thing. Yeah, ex exactly. And the 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 TV, the Shield Pro, which has all that upscale, uh, 4K upscaling, and uh, the, that you talked about, it's only 200 bucks. 200 bucks. So it's and a little is, more than an Apple TV. That's all. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that if there's one, I really can't point to one thing that I hope that a new Apple TV would have, apart from a reason to exist, because this is one of the saddest parts of the entire product line for Apple. There is yeah. no reason for this thing to exist. There is, a, It's a very, very hard sale for somebody else, uh, to, for somebody who's not a fan of technology, to say, give us, give Apple close to a couple hundred bucks, they will give you what? Well, it will be able to play YouTube videos and play Netflix. Well, I get that free on my TV anyway. Well, you'll be able to play games. Oh, it will be as good as on my phone. Not quite, but it'll be on a big screen. <laughs> like, oh, but but I bet you have all kinds of exclusive game titles. No, we don't really. Also, the the remote control kind of sucks. I mean, you, you talk about the there you have you have the Shield TV Pro, two hundred bucks, and it is so powerful you can actually you don't you you don't just run Plex on it. You can run a Plex media server on it. It can this box can record DVR content. It can it can have like terabytes of your movies and music on it and serve it to any place anywhere in the world that's the answer to why are you spending 200 bucks for it in, in, in addition to uh, getting access to uh, streaming gaming libraries at the other hand you have uh, you have roku's stick you have uh, google's chromecast all which costs uh, under 50 bucks and they do uh, they do terrific jobs for it they do a job that is pretty much just as good as the apple tv so that's why 
I just want to see that Apple has a reason for this to exist apart from, hey, look, it's got an Apple logo on it. You love the Apple logo, don't you? Give us an extra hundred bucks and you can have your $50 stick with an Apple logo on it. If there's one of the things I, I've always thought that would be a great move for uh, for the Apple TV is to kind of – it, it will always be an HDMI box you plug into a TV, but its role inside the Apple hardware universe is that it is the Apple computer that is always switched on and always connected to the Internet 24-7. And you think about all the things that that kind of a device could do, including things like a a, a, a version of Back to My Mac where it doesn't matter what kind of device you have, if, if it's an Apple device, it will make a, a software that's built into both the phone, the, the tablet, and the, uh, and the Mac will make sure that you could basically airplay a screen to wherever you are from wherever you're going to be. That kind of stuff is interesting. The ability to uh, act as a router or as a filter for internet content to uh, control your privacy, that would be a nice thing if that was part of a suite of always-on activities. But as it is, it's the one it's the one thing I think of the entire Apple lineup where I have to say there's really no reason to buy it. I would I would encourage you well, instead of buying one of these, buy three dongles so that you can have uh, connectivity for all the TVs in your house, even the one in the kitchen. And I think that for for me, I mean, I haven't had anything other than an Apple TV for a while. I mean, I've had everything, and then I just stopped when when I moved into this house a couple of years ago. That was the last time I plugged anything else in. <laughs> so I just no, I agree. And, I tell and, people and if and you want the best, get the Apple TV. It's you know here the thing is is that is that from a from a privacy perspective I don't let my TVs actually talk to the internet I'm like not interested in that process and so um, and so my Apple TV is that interface exactly um, exactly and I think that and, and so I I trust Apple more than any of the other dongles to only do what it needs to do and constantly be trying to to keep to keep uh, my information private um, and so so I think that and, and I it think could that be the other better thing though is, right it could be better oh it absolutely it's good. Absolutely. It I mean, I, I hate yeah. the controller. I hate the controller yeah. and I hate yeah. the, you know, and all I need, I literally only need the trackpad at the top. <laughs> I don't need all the other buttons. I just wish people would stop using them so that I could just use that top piece. I don't I need any other yeah. buttons. And, and so the, the, um, uh, so I think that that's it. I, I do think that there's an opportunity for, I mean, part of it is also that gets a little mashed up is that as an Apple user, I have, I want everything connected to my dot me account and not have to do yes. all this logging and putting in little yes. codes and doing all the They've weird stuff. They've done a good job of that. Work. And they now tie They've into done your a pretty cable. Good job. They tie into your cable company. So there's a lot but less password entering than there used to be. I don't even want my cable. I don't want the cable company thing. I just want, yeah. I literally want, I bought the, I'm a Apple user. Yeah. Live in the says, Apple ecosystem. Hey, nowhere well, else. Well, like I want, I, and I, and I am not like it. And I, I'm not quite there, but usually when, something is asking me to register to, you know, register to their system and not just use my Apple ID. I just go you know, like, this better be really good or I'm going to quit. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like, you know, like, I'm, you know, like it's like, it, it, it's going to, I'm not going to even, I don't even go over that hump anymore. And yeah. so, uh, you know, like I, if I, if it's for work, like title is a disaster, you know, like you can't figure out how, like I, you know, like it, the way that they've implemented it is just such a pain, you know? And, and so, um, so those are a good, that's a good example of, you know, I just want that to smooth out and just be something that I can get connected to. Right. And so, so I think that, I think that when, as companies do that, um, I think it's great. I also think that there's an opportunity for the Apple TV to, to take that high ground of the next level of technology. And, and, and what's interesting is I don't even expect Apple to do that usually. Usually they're behind on everything, but they have because they're creating content that they're buying, because they're creating the games that they're buying, because they build the hardware, because they build the phones, because they build all this whole ecosystem, their ability to innovate and say, hey, we are going to give you 8K 120 frame per second or 4K 120 frame per, frame per second or, you know, all they've already started doing the HDR and surround sound. They can push that that field down the road much faster than everyone else. Nobody else can do that other than Apple. And, and it really will, you know, then what happens as an Apple user, you're like, well, I have the best of everything <laughs> because I have better frame rates and I have higher resolution and I have, you know, all of those things. Um, and that you literally, the other, the other groups cannot put together because it requires them to all agree to, with each other. The content creators and the manufacturers and everything else all have to come to a consortium and Apple doesn't need to do that. And so I think that, I, and I think that we will continue, I don't know whether Apple will do what I just said. But I think you're going to continue to see Apple do things that say, "I can, we can do something that no one else can do because we don't have to. We don't have to gather agreement. We can just innovate, right. you know." And I think that that's going to be that's their that's their strongest suit when they play it. Yep. 
Mm-hmm. It's a, but it's always going to be about content, not about technological capabilities. Right, I don't, well, I don't which care which about 8K. I don't care about 8K 120 frames per second if it's like a TV show that I've or a movie that I have no interest in whatsoever. It's always no, no, going to be. It's always going to be right. about content and never about the but, technology. Absolutely, which is why they have a whole. But I mean, now that they have a whole studio, you, you, that's why you can't just do it as a uh, if you're not buying that content, you can't. They have to have Apple TV, the Apple TV Plus content be good, you know, um, but I think that, uh, so that, but, but generating that content through the games and through Apple TV plus is part of the puzzle and they have to get that right, but they have to get that right either way. Um, but if you combine that with, it's great content that they're with great actors and great directors and everything else. And oh, by the way, it happens to be the best representation, like as good or better than going to the theater. Um, that is something that also attracts the talent. So, you know, if, if, if uh, a Martin Scorsese knows or, you know, or, or someone else knows that it's going to be, like it's, it's never going to look as good as it, as it looks on Apple TV, you know, they're going to, that helps drive acceptance of, uh, of them working with the platform as well. So that's, that's part of it. I just I don't think you're necessarily wrong. I just think you're overstating it. I think that it, it's you still you still have the bottleneck of how many of your subscribers have TVs that will be able to take advantage of that kind of frame rate and, and that kind of technology. That's that's all I'm saying. The frame rate, the frame rate I, isn't I think, the challenge. I think, I think that's I think it's limiting. I think you want you want to put your 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 energy and your money into getting Babylon Five uh, into and when, when mean, you're fighting by, when you're fighting against Disney who ha- owns damn everything. And you have to figure out how you're going to get people excited about the content that's on your on your device, or your service. Well, and right? I think that, and I think that the 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 interesting thing though is that is that you know at the tra- trajectory we're going, you know, it's going to be, you know, 8K TVs are going to cost what 4K TVs cost right now by next year, you know, and so the, and the 4K resolutions there have really fallen. I mean. 4Ks are nothing now. Yeah. And, and I mean, so, and 8Ks... It's, it's, and 4K OLED 8Ks is are selling. rapidly becoming a standard. I think more people than you realize, Andy, have high-quality TVs well, now. Um, again, the 8K... But I agree, content, 8K, there's no point in having a great picture if, you, if it's like right. a crappy show. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> but that's the problem for the manufacturers that aren't generating content. Apple has a content machine now right. that they can right. they can say, we're going to start shooting. And, I, and where I would go is not with the film stuff. What I would be going at is the nature, um, you know, the small world type... Stuff you get would be these the first weird place you'd go. People like HBO Max who still don't have almost nothing is in 4K. It's all 1080p. Yeah. I mean, so it is. It is. It's. It's both. I think you're both right. It's got to be driven from both mm-hmm. directions. Yeah. yeah. See, I think part of this is that I'm wondering how how much more I'm wondering how important 4K is 8K is going to be compared to 4K because HD was a huge leap forward. 4K was not as big of a leap forward, but something you could appreciate. 8K, you're starting to get to the point of I agree. Uh, unless 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 you've got hunting stalking cats. It. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's not something but that I, it's not something that in a showroom you can really HDR, convince somebody. HDR, frankly, is HDR is more yeah, important yeah. than HDR. HDR, HDR, is, HDR is much yeah. Yeah. HDR and and zone based lighting, uh, backlighting is are much much bigger things than than well, uh, 8K at this point. I mean the the. All I can say is that once you've seen 8K, 120 frame per second HDR, when you when you combine those three things together, it is like looking out of a window. Like it is just like looking at out of a, it's like a window in your house that goes out to the outside world. And you, there is some combination of what those are that it, like for instance, if that fills your periphery, you will start feeling any camera motion starts to make your stomach pull in, you know? And so, and that is an entirely, it just shifts an entirely different gear in your head um, or at least been, that's been my experience of looking at that kind of footage is that your brain literally tr- processes it completely differently than it does regular video or film. And, and so, um, so I think that there is this point where that when we go over that hump, there's going to be a group of things that are go- coming out. And again, I think it makes more sense. I think you actually have to shoot differently because I've, I have found that that at that resolution and frame rate, I get uncomfortable when the yeah. edits are too fast. Yeah, you know, like it, and so, and the, but the places that that's going to make a difference if they can figure that part out is uh, sports, nature. You know, like football at 8K on an 85 inch, you know, 8K screen, you know, it, with surround and everything else. That you know, an HDR will be a thing. Like people will. Uh, right. You know, it 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 will be as good as you know for many people as good as being there. 
you know, gonna, but Apple's, Apple's not going to get exclusive on that. So it's gonna, they're going to be chasing every single other person who now has a, an $80 dongle that does 4K, uh, 8K, 120 frames per second. But that, the, the, the amount of horsepower required to do it is pretty high. You can't, it's going to be hard. The, the thing is, is that's the advantage of doing it is because you can't put it into a dongle. I mean, Let me take a little eight, break and then there okay. is uh, something that's not a rumor that is news. But we'll talk about that in just a sec. Renee Ritchie, Alex Lindsay, Andy Anatko, you're watching Mac Break Weekly. Brought to you by SanDisk. I love my SanDisks. I tell you what, let me show you. I have a couple of new SanDisk uh, drives SanDisk data storage solutions have always been among my favorites, but this is this is so cool. This is the iExpand flash. It's called the iExpand flash drive Lux. You know, SanDisk USB stuff has always been fantastic. But what is cool about this? Watch. So it's got a Type C connector on this side, but watch watch this. Woo! I flipped it around, and now it's a Lightning port. I plug it into my iPhone, and all of a sudden, uh, I I can back up directly from my iPhone using the SanDisk uh, app, which is incredible. Back up if you want photos. As soon as I plugged it in, I'm backing up all my contacts, you see. You can back up. I love it because it's backing up photos from iCloud as well. It can back up uh, all of your data, if you want, directly to a USB device. They come in 64 128 or 256 gigs, and then flip it around, plug it into your iPad, plug it into your MacBook, anything with a Type-C connector. So those of us who live in the in the uh, Mac world and want to move data around from all of our devices, having that, having that lightning on one end and the Type-C on the other end is fantastic. Of course, it's fast. Uh, it is a USB 3.1. I've already got all my contacts backed up. I could back up my photos, too, if I want. I mean, this is just uh, incredible. And you can view the files. You can see my camera roll backup, contacts, music, photos, videos. It's got a secure access program you could put on your Mac as well. This is just fantastic. And then unplug it. Plug it into your... I love it that I could do this with it. Frankly, with the uh, iPad Pro, it's really nice to have that Type-C connector on the iPad Pro. This is a must-have for anybody who's got an iPhone. Uh, who's got a Mac, who's got anything that you want to move data around. It's the two-in-one drive from SanDisk. Right now, it's 15% off your first order. Uh, actually, it's more than just this drive. There's other SanDisk featured SanDisk products on the webpage. It's sandisk.com slash MacBreak. SanDisk, S-A-N-D-I-S-K dot com slash MacBreak. This is such a good idea and so useful for anybody who's got stuff on their iPhone. And they just, you know, you can use iCloud to back it up. It's nice to have this local, quick, easy backup. And it's really good for transferring files back and forth from uh, my iPhone and my MacBook Pro. A two-in-one flash drive for your iPhone and USB Type-C devices. Get a 15% discount. Go to sandisk.com slash M-A-C-B-R-E-A-K, Mac Break. And we thank you, Sandisk, for your support. I really, I, I actually, as often as the case with Sandisk, uh, I buy about five of them so that I have them every, I want to saturate everything because uh, they're just so darn useful. I love having that. Uh, let's see. Big, uh, I think a big story, but it ties into what we were talking about. Might even tie into a March event. Apple is, uh, has said, we're not going to sell any more iMac Pros. Um, they're going to sell out. There's going to be discontinued when supplies run out. They're pushing people towards the just the regular iMac, which is, I guess, a smart move because, frankly, uh, the 27-inch iMac that came out in August is probably, I hate to say it, given I spent five grand on that <laughs> iMac Pro, probably just as good. But I want to I want to interpret this a little bit differently. I want to think that this means they're going to come up with an Apple Silicon iMac sooner than later. And the last thing they want to do is sell an Apple Silicon iMac that is faster for half the price that is faster than the iMac Pro. <laughs> they don't they want anybody to buy that iMac Pro now, right? I got the one with the Z, 10 core Xeon because you told me to, Renee. And um, <laughs> yeah, that was a sweet spot. I mean, and that served that sort of served it patched the glaring gap in Apple's. A product line between the 2013 Mac Pro and the yeah. 2019. It's still Mac on Pro, my. It's still, it honestly, it's a long still, time. It's still on my uh, office, home office desk. 
It's a and I put 64 gigs of RAM in it. I mean, it's it's kind of crazy. Yeah. I've got a lot of and it's ECC memory and it's Xeon processors the way, and it's a lot of things that a lot of pros wanted back then. Yeah, let's talk about ECC because uh, recently Linus Torvalds, a creator of Linux, and others have started to say there is no good reason that ECC RAM should be only in pro devices. Everybody now needs ECC RAM. If you have spot, you know, weird unexplained data loss or weird unexplained crashes, it's because in often you don't have ECC RAM and uh, there is this drumbeat. Do you agree, Alex, you, you probably only buy ECC, I would guess, error yeah. correcting <laughs> RAM. Yeah, yeah, I mean, RAM is, I, I think that RAM is, uh, Oftentimes, the the biggest thing that can connects a, an unstable computer to a stable computer. So there's yeah. a, you know that we um, we spent a lot of time when we were working at both Lucasfilm and ILM. This is way back uh, of examining RAM and, and Electric Image used to make a piece of software that would run all weekend and just check every little register in every piece of the RAM. And we'd send a lot of stuff back because uh, what we found was there was an incredible connection between. Uh, that RAM stability and everything working and our the stability and you know of our, our it's not so much speed or anything else just the stability because it runs to a register stability. that isn't valid stability it is so, slower in fact right because of the error right. correction but but it it is but st a lot of times computers that and it's gotten so much better over the years but still that's the kind of RAM you want to have if you're doing anything mission critical yeah Linus Torvalds said of quote like one of the let me read the Linus quote just because it's sure. so good. The misguided and arse backward policy of consumers don't need ECC made the market for ECC memory go away. He blames Intel. The arguments against error correcting RAM are always complete and utter garbage. Now even the memory manufacturers are starting to do ECC internally because they finally owned up to the fact they absolutely have to. He blames Intel <laughs> for all this, and you can see he's he's flipping he's a pointing. model. He's, he's like pointing, pointing at straight up. Only... Bit flips happen. Uh, Linus is he's like he's like uh, DHH where they only have one setting for social media posts, and that's flame. You know, flame full on flamethrower. It can no, it can no stop row thing. hammer attacks, which are kind of devastating. Um, it's just it's just the right thing to do. So yeah, so that's a good reason. I would hope that <laughs> Apple would start looking at ECC going forward, given the premium the you're paying for Apple Gear. One of the issues with this is that we have two tensions, two dynamics here. And, and one is that people really want affordable technology. Like they want, we want everything. We don't want to pay for anything. And there is a sweet spot in between that. But you hear a lot of times like, why is an Apple like Dell? I don't need the best quality SSD. I'll buy the super cheap one. I don't need the best quality you RAM. You do though. That's I'll buy the, the point. super cheap one. You do. Why are they soldering the RAM to the board in a portable? If I drop it and I and the and it gets unseated, I'll take like there are a lot of things that can be done to make super high quality stuff, but that is not the same as as like the bargain basement stuff that some people would really like to have as an option as well. I can completely agree with Linus. I just know that as soon as it happens, there'll be complaints about why do I have to get ECC RAM? Yeah. Why am I only getting top shelf SSDs? D I think all DDR5 uh, is going to be ECC. Does But Apple, for Good. for instance, does not offer ECC in its laptops. They use really high spec. Like they, they get the best of the best of everything and we pay for it. And there's absolutely, Apple charges a fortune for memory and you can get really good stuff if you're smart enough from you know, other vendors as well, but they only buy the best SSDs. They only buy right. the best uh, RAM that they can source. And because they're Apple, they can force companies to give them the best bin stuff. Yep. So uh, anyway, I got to, sorry, sorry. You said ECC and it, <laughs> it triggered me. I'm sorry. Uh, important, <laughs> it is important. And I would like to see it more and more in Apple's stuff because reliability is important. Um, what do you think? When would we see an iMac with Apple Silicon? In the first half of the year or the dub second dub. half? Dub dub. I think yeah. dub dub PC. June. Yeah, that's me. June. Uh, you know what I really want? Like, I, I think it would get a re-event. I've mentioned like, I think this. it would get its own event because if it's a redesign. I mentioned this last week, but I just want to keep saying it because maybe it'll become true. I, I've decided I don't want an iMac anymore because uh, I think that as great as they are, the screen technology moves faster and I don't want to tie the screen to the processor. So really what I want is a high-end Mac Mini. Will we see... Mac with an Apple with, display, right? or yeah, and I can pair it with an Apple display if I want, or a 59-inch curved display if I so choose. Will we see higher-end Mac Minis at Dub Dub as well? That would be a logical time. 
Yeah. I think we'll see those the same, yeah, the same time. Because if, if they're going to make a processor that goes into the iMac, they should, that processor should go into the MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini and, and Mac get Mini. another Space yeah. Gray version out there. And I'd like 32 gigs of RAM probably. I know Alex would like 128 or... 128 would be yeah. great. Um, <laughs> the, uh, I mean, but I think that the, the, I think that Apple, the fact that we got a Mac Mini and it was one of the first things out there, I think is a it's recognizing it's how a good valuable yeah. the machines are to a lot of us, especially those aren't that there isn't a server... It, for a lot of us, it's the ability to um, a p condense a lot of processors into one small place on a rack is is pretty valuable. Yeah. No, I, th I think that uh, this is the rollout strategy that we saw that we have to make sure that we cover every single use case that we that we're promoting uh, for the Mac. That yes, if you if you're a desktop user, we got a desktop. For you, if you're a pro user, we got a MacBook Pro. If we if you like the ultralight form factor, here's how it works with an ultralight. Where we're not going to throw a, we're not going to throw a, a fan in there. We're just going to make sure we can serve as much power as possible. That's it's the 2021 is always going to be so fascinating because this is the year that Apple shows what this processing family can do that we're, we're there's not going to be any excuses for only having you know one thunderbolt controller there's no there's only they're not going to be uh they're they're not going to be excuses for ram limitations or anything else like that this is going to be the year that we're going to see at least one machine that shows you here is what we can do when we want to maximize on the on the variable of power uh, and that's going to be something interesting i think the imac and the uh, the, the iMac and the Mac Mini are two very, very good targets for that sort of thing because they can set very, very good goals. Uh, and particularly with the iMac Pro, where they can see here's how, here's how much the they can say here's how much the Apple Silicon based iMac uh, Pro kicks the butt performance wise on the old one. And we don't have it doesn't make as much noise as a quadricopter when you're trying to actually render video. I mean, remember those huge, huge, huge fans oh, God, uh, that, yes. that they needed to put in there just to cool it down and make make sure it's working. Yeah. So and the, the Mac Mini is it really is, I think, the sleeper machine, like kind of like Alex alluded to that. It is when you when you don't want to spend money on a screen, you don't need you, don't, you just want something you can as as much connectivity as possible as you don't want to have as many harmonicas and bridges connected to it just so you can connect all your USBs and all of your uh, high speed uh, networking and all your high speed storage that's going to be a really really good show off piece so WWDC is going to be a very very interesting place to show off all to the developers now we want to we, we were selling you last year the devices that you bought just to make sure that your code would run properly here is the stuff that we're going to sell you because you want to start to run Xcode and compile pro, uh, compile packages like 10 times faster than you could before yeah I think I, I want to replace my IMAX basically with Mac minis. It just seems yeah. like the, the logical thing to do. Uh, I'm, I'm, I haven't bought the new laptop. I've obviously a bunch of Mac, of the new Mac minis and just, I just love them. I mean, they just come up oh, so fast and they're fantastic. stable. And they, oh, I mean, there's some, yeah. I want the 16 inch so badly. The 16 yeah. inch MacBook Pro. MacBook Pro. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also WWDC. Green machine. I think the M1X stuff like will, like, they could do an event. Like the only thing that, if they're just putting out like new chips in the existing chassis, they've already done that. They've explained, they've right. shown us how that works. So now it's so I think those designs. could be press releases. Yeah. But if it's the new designs, if they, like the new design for the iMac is ready, I think anything that has a new design gets an event. And typically they've done iMacs and MacBook Pros and things in WWDC. So if they don't have like a May event or an April event that is just specific to the Mac, and they might because it's the new season of Apple shows, they can do anything they want now. Maybe there'll be a special <laughs> April Mac event and they do all this. Well, that's what not. I wonder. I, I really think this could be the home. year the year of Mac events. I mean, we had three last fall. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see <laughs> one every other month or something like that. I mean, th there's going to be a lot because it does work better. We don't need to have these in-person events. They're fantastic. Yeah. 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 I mean, Plus, I, mean I think that... Go ahead. Uh, just imagine Andy. one one device having the entire news cycle for that week, as opposed to right. pick your pick pick yeah. your winner. Do you want to talk about the new right. service? Do you want to talk about the new device? Do you want to talk about the new desktop? It yeah. make me happy. We wouldn't have to do so many rumor shows. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah, spread it out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you really as soon as that sixteen inch comes out, I'm maxing it out. Oh, yep. Go ahead, Alex. Yeah, and, I, and I think that you know the the last Apple's getting better at those uh, at the keynotes, um, and so there those are. Those are getting better. Um, really I think good, that I think, yeah. um, Frame.io yeah. kind of set the high high watermark. Uh, I'm sure that no one's missed that. What's Frame.io? <laughs> as far as what was that? Fr well, Frame.io released. Uh, you know, they released their new camera to cloud um, technology, which I think I talked about in a previous one. But it really let the 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 thing. For filmmakers, it's amazing. It means that you can be at a set, and while you're shooting, it's putting those uh, it literally when you stop the camera it uploads the file so that an editor can be starting to cut with it 
as you're working, like as you're in the field, it's sending all that stuff back to like literally dropping it into Resolve or Final Cut. So or, camera, or other, basically other camera to cloud. Yeah, but but what makes what was from a keynote perspective, the rollout of that, which, you know, was starring Emery Wells, <laughs> our friend. Oh, you're kidding. Um, yeah, it's Emery's company, right? Right. And, um, and so, uh, so anyway, that rollout, that keynote rollout, it's probably the best keynote ever made. I'm going to watch know, like, it. Because they, they stopped being, I mean, it's they stopped trying to figure out how to reproduce anything that even looks like a stage. They just were like, we're going to make a movie about our product. Yeah, why not? <laughs> and and yeah. that's like, and that's, is, and, and when <laughs> Apple, when Apple turns that corner, they haven't turned that corner By the corner way, yet. they also they, did it in 35 minutes. Right. And, and, and again, you can, you can start, you can, and they, and they packed when you watch it they packed an enormous amount of information yeah. into, into 35 minutes. And, yeah. and the thing is, is then you see the design is really good because Emery's a post-production person, right. you know? So, um, but when you, well, you're the, also the, talking to that audience, so you better look good, right? You, you're talking yeah. to a very knowledgeable audience. Well, and they, and they have incredible, you know, they, uh, you know, so, but you, but they just, you know, again, they stopped thinking about this as a, um, live event you know, on stage. A live event. This is just, event. It's a movie. It's, yeah. There's, there's yeah. from the Paramount yeah. backlot. Well, there's you know, and, um, California on the back lot in the Paramount. That's cool. Yeah. But so and every, they did do a little bit of a presenter thing. Well, he's talking about it. It's it's a, it's more of a I'd say more of a almost a James Burke or TV show kind yeah. of thing where I'm going to walk through something and talk the about Wanda it. The division. Yeah. The, so so it's it is a. Um, but the the main thing is is that. When you look at this keynote, what you're looking at is we're no longer, it's just a TV show about the product. Right. You know, and if you skip forward, you'll see more and more of that. Um, Apple still is like the, the, best, um, the best stage show ever. Right, like they're doing that really, really well. But they're still tied but, to that old, old thing. Maybe because they're, they're thinking we're going to come back to it. Well, I, I think that that, again, I think that I would, as a press person, I would rather just go into the theater and watch a, watch a yep. movie and then come out and play with the products. You know, like right. it's, you know, I don't need, yep. I don't need to see them on stage. It doesn't mean anything to me. Right. You agree, Renee? Yeah, absolutely. I, if we went in there. I mean, like you'll lose a little bit of the energy that Craig Federici gets for making his dad jokes when we all groan at them right back at him. <laughs> yeah. You know, that you, right. that fees their performances a little bit, but if there was hybrid where like a couple of guys come out, like Tim Cook comes out or Kyan Drance comes out and says, this is what we have for you. And then they break it up into a few separate video acts and everyone at home gets a much better presentation because they're not just watching a bunch. It's like the difference between filming a stage play and making a movie, exactly to Alex's point. And then as long as we have the hands-on area afterwards, we can do everything we need. We can talk to them. So okay. It would be great. Yeah. Mostly, I think it's important that they just get their story straight that we're going to figure out what this device or what this product or service can do, whether it's suitable for purpose, whether it's a good value, all that kind of stuff uh, on our own. But it, yeah, I think that that's the opportunity for these companies to say, here is what we intend this to be for. This is the kind of user that we've designed this for so that we're not saying, oh, well, geez, I mean, if this, if this, ca if this camera doesn't support 240 frames per second at 8K, I mean, who are you trying to kid? Well, we're not trying to it's make trash. it for professional filmmakers. It's just for, it's just for consumers. Consumers are trying to get, uh, that's, that's the sort of, that's what they have to focus on. If they're trying to impress us with lots of hold for applause moments, that's the, that's the point at which well, like I and, find myself checking my email during the, during the, the presentation. Alex, right. to leave us alone. And I think that just that, you know, the, what brings up the production value of a lot of these stage shows are all the, the movies that they play out that show you what that product can yeah. do. And why not just get rid of all the stage stuff? <laughs> you know, just, 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 just do, yeah. just do the impressive part that, that sets the context of what they want to say. And, and just tighten that all up and, and, and enough of yeah. the, you know, the presentation stuff and just explain it and make it a great movie. And I think that Apple's going that direction. I think face, uh, frame IO passed them, you know, and I think that, uh, I think if, if Apple, Apple takes the weight that it has and put in the budget that it has to do this and, and it could easily turn this into a feature film quality, you know, uh, presentation that is not slowed down by, how fast you can talk about something. You know, that's the problem with all stage stuff is that it's just it's very inefficient. I think Apple is uh, probably looking at this. I mean, really, it's a problem of uh, PR and communications and marketing, not mm -hmm. a problem of technology. And that I think what you're going to see is you're going to see different styles evolve over time. Yeah. Right now, Apple's still stuck in that notion of, well, we had Steve Jobs come out on the stage because he was Steve Jobs. 
Uh, I think you're right. Well, Alex. we also didn't have the quality. We we didn't we have what well. we have now. Yeah. You couldn't have done it. You yeah. know, like the thing is, is that the, the 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 ability to do this at this level hasn't really the ability to distribute. You could have always made a movie there. out of it. You could have always you could have always but there made was a no, TV show. I mean, there's no reason they had to do a stage presentation. Right, but, but I think it. that it was, it was well, I think they did it because they had the best keynote guy of all time. <laughs> right. And so right. they did it because people came to see Steve Jobs and and see him right. in person. So there, but know, other companies did have, it too, and they didn't. Well, that's right. I think that <laughs> it's really a PR marketing uh, problem. And you know what's going to happen is styles are going to change, content's going to change. Apple is probably time to start thinking. You know, Steve's not with us anymore. Well, we don't have to do a Steve Jobs keynote anymore. I think a lot of companies though are finding that hey, the movie the movies look a lot better than anything we were doing on stage, and so that's starting to break that up. You know, I, yeah, and, but I disagree you know. with you, Alex. I mean, I have you have a different philosophy than me, but I do think that there. Uh, they, I still go to plays. There are reasons for a live presentation, and I wouldn't. Uh, it, you got to remember, this is not about getting the most amount of content out as fast as possible for an expert in the field. This is PR and marketing. This is aimed at the, the like generic Apple press. AR would be in sense like yeah. in person. That this would make is, a lot of sense. This is aimed at the general press. This is uh, aimed at normal users. Uh, so they have to really think about who are we aiming this at and what do they want? If they're going to make everything for Alex Lindsay, I agree. They should make it differently. Well, no, but I, but I think that I, th but I think that the thing is, is that, is that I still want that face, face to face time that you get in one of those things where I get to talk to an expert and I get to have all Again, of that stuff. That's the stuff that's important to me. Like you have yeah. different needs. I'm sitting than the reporter a, from Bloomberg, who has it as a different agenda. I, I just think that the that. Uh, you got to trust that the company's PR and marketing people are good enough to understand the, the audience and to make something that fits the audience's needs. Yeah, I agree with you. But, it's time to move on, but but it doesn't necessarily time to do every for everybody to do a TV show. Also, also another another part of the problem is that over the years, a lot of companies, Apple included, have been doing a uh, have been restricting access to the people that you want to talk to much, much more tightly. It used to be that there were, there, there would be certain engineers, there would be certain people that you know of just sort of milling about that you can sort of walk up to and ask yeah, particular you don't get questions. That anymore. Yeah. And now it's at, the, there was a, I don't know when, what, when the signal change was, but now it's like either you're alone in a room in a very, very controlled environment with one hand selected person who's been doing this for two days, or you're going to be talking to people who are very, very knowledgeable, who can definitely walk you through it. But if you ask them something that, is maybe off the boards you're definitely going to get it oh well we'll get back to you and then and that might be a, a, you know you. honestly that might be a flaw in apple's culture that may uh, not be the best way to deal with the press but it's the way apple does because they're well you so see a ton of microsoft it. executives in clubhouse like like just and and google executives in clubhouse on stage talking about this stuff and you never see that from apple right <laughs> so it's it's a cultural thing and who knows if it's the right thing for them to do it might well, not be and I also think that that again, again, resolution and so on and so forth makes a big difference. I mean, when we started doing these these keynotes, the best we could do was standard deaf television. That's true. Like, so you would never want to release That's something true. like that now. The ability just to do 60 frame 4K is enough to be an entirely different experience for someone watching than than if we were putting up, you know, 640 by 480. Yeah. You know, so that that's part of the problem too. Yep. And also put a 3D model of the thing that you're trying to you're trying to seduce someone to buying. Like here it is on your desk. Doesn't that look nice? Yeah, you can make yeah. that real for only eighteen hundred dollars. Yeah. Right. A couple other stories before we get to the uh, the picks of the week. Apple TV has announced that they're going to do a programming partnership with Malala. Uh, yeah. What? Uh, that's interesting. Uh, Apple. You know, it's funny because probably this isn't the kind of thing you do if you say I want big ratings. So that's kind of nice that Apple doesn't have to say, well, we're, we're, we're in it for the ratings. Maybe we're in it for the good we can do. So We don't give a damn about the ROI. Wasn't that the famous Tim Cook statement? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Malala has a production company called Extracurricular, uh, and they're going to, I believe in the power of stories to bring families together, forge friendships, build movements, and inspire children to dream. I couldn't ask for a better partner, Malala says, than Apple. To help bring these stories to life, so it you know it'll be interesting. It's you know it's going to be good PR. It may not be good TV. They had a long relationship with her though. Like Tim Cook has and and she's been me and her and she and her, English is such a hard language for me. Have been meeting for years and they've been talking about those meetings for years and they've been supporting uh, her fund for years. Yeah, and I think great. this is just the next logical step for them in yeah. in servicing their greater agenda. But I have to say, a lot of the Apple originals are more about that than they are about uh, what's going to be, you know, what's going to be the next Mandalorian. 
Uh, they this, have foundation. I have to admit, Leo. I'm so nervous. Foundation might be. <laughs> I yeah. I'm so I'm, nervous. I'm I got to screw it up. Name. Yeah. I found that their 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 uh, the small world was something that I was excited about. I haven't actually watched almost you know anything what? else. I've watched enough Ed of Lasso it, too. and I don't like it because uh, and it's your fault, Alex, because I realize now how much of it's staged <laughs> and fake, <laughs> and it's all your fault. But it's even worse than the normal nature documentary. I mean, it's really very obvious that they're cobbling this together, and that kind of bugged me. I don't think it's a very good nature documentary, in my opinion. Which one? Small World. Tiny oh, World. I enjoyed it. I know. It was fun. Lisa enjoys it, too, so that's why I'm watching it. But um, you, sp like I said, you said, oh, I yeah, they fake it's all that stuff. And once I knew that, it was like, it, it, the seams were that's very been, that's been since the That's been since the, the, the dawn of I know, of but if you watch BBC's you know. Planet Earth, it's not immediately apparent that it's that there's <laughs> it's because it's because it's not as high quality either i mean part of it is, is just these insane shots that are just unbelievable uh are um you know are, are part of that and i think that that's the part that is just so interesting about it um it, they're just really hard shots like they're um yeah so, so you I like it that, for production reasons but now well, i think i think it's I interesting too i think it's now, i think I it's interesting you learn a lot i think that there's a lot of do really you, interesting do you yeah, really I, learn a lot Okay, the, in episode one, that damn dung beetle. Uh, <gasps> Spoilers. Totally fake. Totally faked. You know, I don't, he pushes it I don't into the, a, a lake, but it's not a lake. It's the hoof print of a giant elephant. Look, he's so tiny. And then, right, I mean, right, I right. just like, oh, please give and me. And Bob Borch's house is right next to the tiny dung beetle. It's, just, <laughs> it's all CGI. I like nature documentaries, I guess, but uh, it's no They're all Earth. like that, though. It's I no mean, they're, they're, the thing is, they're all manufactured. Like I know, you spoiled it for me. Thanks. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he's so watching. Stops to, watch. to enjoy an ice Also, Star Gatorade Trek not plus, filmed on location, on. Leo. I'm, yeah, I'm, Star Trek not filmed on location. <laughs> okay. Sorry. But yeah, but Star Trek, you know that's a, you know, the ice cream cone guy is really, you know, a, a piece of canvas over a wire. The universal right? translator translates everything but Klingon. Yeah, I understand the rules of that. You know that. <laughs> you, you accept that. Uh, anyway. I just want Ted Lasso too. I, I, I want to break it to you, Leo, that a lot of those reality TV shows, there's not really any reality. No, I know that. <laughs> I just want no, to make sure you're I clear. know that. Like, I'm like, watching Below all... Deck. I know it's all in the editing. I know. I not know. even just in the editing. It's all manufactured. I yeah, mean, the yeah. whole thing, the whole no, thing you is can manufactured. Tell. You could tell. When yeah. someone turns around and they yell the B word, it's they, they're doing that in post. They're totally making up that drama to get ratings. Actually, you know, I found that out with Below Deck, which is my secret... An, an embarrassing awesome. ple pleasure. Uh, it's about uh, uh, super yachts and the crews that are below deck and the horrible, usually, guests that are above deck. And there's a lot of drama and stuff. And I found out later that they loop a lot of that dialogue. That six months yeah. after they shoot the whole thing, they bring the cast in into a studio to loop dialogue. It's like, well, that's really bad. <laughs> that's to make, totally yeah, to make the, To spill the tea, to make the drama. Yeah, all, they got to yeah, spill the tea. Fake, Leo, everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's fake turtles all the way down. Yeah, I don't, I don't care. I, I absolutely believe that Tara did not come here to make friends. You, it's, you can just see that. You, can fe you can't fake that. Uh, uh, you were mentioning Tidal Square has purchased uh, Jay-Z's title, $297 million. Well, now, not purchased. I think just controlled. Uh, controlling controlling interest. interest, I think. Yes, yeah. you're right. Majority. Um, Jay-Z will join Square's board. Jack Dorsey will now have Twitter. Square and title to run. It's amazing. This guy, how does he do it all? Um, I think I think the interesting thing there will be that that he just sold his first tweet on NFT. Can you and I think that that's <laughs> that's the tie in to title. Like, you know, is all those artists that have all this perceived value. No, you've really not you're not wrong. There that that's that's one of the things they're thinking about because Square obviously a financial transaction company. Why would right. they buy a music uh, a streaming music service? Huge pent up um, opportunity for if if you understood NFT and you got a hold of all those artists who, that can sign things and sell them on NFT. I mean, Grimes, what did, what did she make? Like five five point eight million or eight point five million or something minutes. like that. Oh my! God. In like twenty minutes. And so so the thing is is that is that getting access to those artists and you know make and tying the music experience into the NFTs is probably a pretty interesting business model, which I, I wouldn't think of except for the fact that he immediately around the sale sold his first tweet. Um, hasn't sold it yet. Yeah. It's or not too late. You have till March 21st to get okay. in on the action. Are they pronounced nifties or knifties? Is it like gif gif? I'm going to get yelled at <laughs> if I pronounce it NFT, I think. Well, yeah, I see. It, yeah, they say NFT. It rhyme with grift. Nifty, That's my grift. Position. Nift rhymes with grift. That's what Andy answered on Twitter. I love that so much. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. 
<laughs> That's exactly yeah, yeah. right, Andy. Yep. He's selling his until, first until, tweet. Until until this is a marketplace of people who actually want the things that they're buying as opposed to people who are speculating. We're, 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 we're back it's in the days of pogs, beanie babies. Yeah, yeah it's speculation. It's, Although we're, uh, well, Trey Ratcliffe is going to be, be uh, on Twig tomorrow. So just a little plug for this week in Google tomorrow afternoon. Uh, Trey's got starting to do NFTs for his art. And I thought, well, let's get somebody who's selling this stuff to explain it. Trey's always been on the cutting edge of all of this stuff. Uh, he Okay, it has a little bit to do with the fact that he gave me one of his NFTs. So <laughs> I'm rich. No, I don't know what I'd do with it. I said I promised him I won't sell. It's it. like the internet, like the inter digital goods provided infinite abundance and zero marginal cost for replication. And now we've figured out a way to artificially create both scarcity and value. Yeah. For these things, at the at the expense of massive compute and electrical yeah, power. at the expense of the yeah, environment. Exactly. Yeah, well, uh, you know, we're right. going to have global global uh, warming, but at least we'll have NFTs. Can't we use the global warming the way that they use like the the, the temperate springs in Scandinavia? Can't we just power oh, everything? There are lots the of people now who use uh, uh, crypto miners to heat the house. I just uh, <laughs> there's a great Reddit thread on a guy. Because he has a heat pump, so a heat pump takes the air and you know recirculates it. And he figured out if he could put the crypto miner in between, it would heat the air. Because there's a big deal with a heat pump if it's really cold outside, as people in Texas learned, yeah. it doesn't do a very good job because it's it's such a, a gradient between the temperature outside and the temperature inside. But if you put a Bitcoin miner in between the two, <laughs> profit. Yep. I went we to, should do that at I the was, border because right now our heat pump doesn't really help you guys in winter because there's not enough Canadian air to get yeah, rid of all your. I know, your I know. you guys are way too cold up there. I know. <sighs> Speaking yeah, when, of the, when I was at RPI, our computing center, our computing center was heated by the computer yeah, in the basement, yeah, literally. Yeah. And, that, and that we're talking, we're talking about up, RPI, upstate New York. So that's that's saying something. <laughs> Visual Studio Code, which has been available in beta uh, for Apple Silicon, is now officially the first stable release of uh, uh, probably one of the most popular uh, code editors, VS Code. Uh, it's joining a long list of apps that are we're finally starting to see M1 really be well, widely supported. I see universal binaries for a lot of apps now. Um, I only have a, maybe three or four on my uh, MacBook Pro that are still running Intel under Rosetta 2. So I think that's good news if you're an M1 fan or if you're an Apple Silicon fan. Yeah. People are... There's no question that developers uh, are jumping. In. Not just the Apple, you know, the Apple guys like James Thompson, but but right. uh, big companies like Microsoft are jumping on the bandwagon. So that's really well. There was that huge 3D and um, what was it? Octane. Oct is it Octane 10 or Octane X? Octane X. Yeah, you have to explain Octane that X. to yeah. me. What is Octane X? That's got to be Octane. an Alex thing because they're talking about minting <laughs> NFTs with it too, and I'm so confused. <laughs> it's so it's fast spectral GPU rendering. Yeah, it, so uh, Octane is a very, very high-end, uh, Otoy makes Octane, they've been around for a long time, and it's a very high-end renderer. So it does really high-end, um, powerful uh, rendering, and um, it has not been, I mean, it's, it's now moved to the App Store, and I think that you get a free year license um, of it to, to use it, which is, I don't remember what the cost is, but it's expensive. <laughs> so um, it's, it's, I was actually going to make it like a second pick this week because it's just, it's really exciting. Um, that, you get a free one-year subscription to Octane yeah. uh, X Prime and Enterprise. Wow. Yeah. Normally, so normally 40 euros a month. So Right. Yeah. So it's, it's worth, uh, if you're doing 3D, uh, it's definitely worth um, doing. So you, you can, you know, most of the 3D app applications will render out to it. So you can say, this is the renderer that I'm using, um, you know, to to send that out. And so I think that it's uh, it's pretty slick. Yeah, so... Um, Too bad we don't have better on, GPUs to take advantage of it. <laughs> well, it'll be interesting to see what the M1 does, you know, or, and, and of course a Mac Pro can can probably uh, run it pretty well. So, um, I love but this. this is the line. Uh, Octane X for Mac brings all the Octane X enterprise standalone features to, to Mac users, including Octane X DCC plugins, enterprise features, and the uh, render network support, the industry's first decentralized GPU rendering platform, enabling forward-thinking Mac bum. artists to publish their NFT crypto art on the Ethereum blockchain. Thank well, you very and, much. And and one of the things that just happened, Intel I, I, too. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't follow exactly who it was, but there was a, there was an artist that just sold, he, I mean, he spent a lot of time on it. This, this Michael Jackson, uh, head, you know, bust or digital, digital rendering of Michael Jackson sold it for $128,000 on, um, 
you know, as an NFT. And so, you know, the, I think that there is actually a pretty big market for 3D artists to create something that's original and putting it out an NFT. It's not, I mean, oh, the, the NFT thing, I, I, I need to say that I, I, I'm trying to get my head around it because, uh, you know, I, I'm not a collector. I don't collect anything. So, I mean, I keep some of my old gear that I think is cool, but that's about it, you know, and, and um, so I don't really understand the speculative nature of this process, but, but I can see people, how they're taking advantage of it. And Octane will be one of the renders that I think is, is used uh, to produce some of the high quality, um, you know, high quality stuff. You're talking about Beeple, who is actually the most unassuming kind of normal guy who is selling millions of dollars of NFTs uh, on, uh, uh, it's amazing, really, NFT artwork. Mike Winkleman, um, setting records, actually, on his NFTs. Wow. Uh, yeah, there's a whole uh, budgeting field about NFTs and copyright too and trademark and like all, all the different ways that if you have ownership of it, are, like what, is, what does that mean in terms of the copyright of it? It's going to be uh, crazy pants for a while. Crazy yeah. pants. Yeah. My favorite kind of pants. <laughs> well, who's, I mean, who isn't? iCloud user locked out for six months over coding bug related to her last name. <laughs> yeah. Rachel's last name is True. <laughs> it happened before with Null, right? And now this is the second time yeah. that something like this has happened? Cannot set value True to property last name. Of course not, so because True is a Boolean, not a string. Anyone else getting this error from Apple iCloud? <laughs> no, <laughs> only Rachel True. <laughs> yeah, she forgot to capitalize the last, the first letter of her last name, and she's been locked out for six months. Oh, I and now laugh. she, I know it's it's yeah it's and the actually the, 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 the sadder part the sadder part of the story is that this has been going on for six months, and yeah. now she's yeah. just 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 like uh, a lot of other people in customer service problems. So long, if we can turn this into a buzzworthy article, maybe we can finally shame this company into recognizing that you've kind of destroyed part of my life here. Ugh. That's what we've learned. And little Johnny drop tables still. Little Johnny tables. Little Johnny tables. <laughs> he ran the tables. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm just looking for all the little uh, uh, wonderful shorties that uh, Micah Sargent has put together for us today. Apple faces a French complaint. Oh, sacré bleu. Over the... Zut, zut alors. Zut alors. Over do the do it, iPhone French advertising... Complaint. Tool, France well Digital, Apple. a lobby group representing startups and venture capital firms, filed a complaint on Tuesday saying that Apple's, Tuesday being today, that Apple's own advertising system does not, its own system does not seek its user's consent for receiving targeted ads, but they do require that of every third party. I thought Apple fixed that. That was a complaint from Facebook No, it's, as well. it's complete nonsense. It's like it, it, the, Apple's thing is first party and nobody intercedes on first party. Facebook can serve you all the ads they want on Facebook. Google can serve you all the ads they want on Google search and you YouTube and Gmail and Android. I mean, if they really wanted to, this, that's all Apple does is show you recommended apps in the app store, which is like the lamest of, of advertising possible uh, that I can think of and completely different than third party. So it's just, I think it's a sign that Facebook's sort of BS conflation propaganda is permeating. It's working. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what the uh, outcome of that is. Apple says. Would we even notice? It's so bad. Would we even notice if they stop doing it? Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because you kind of skip over it. You're just like, oh my gosh. Let's just, right. let's just scroll past that. App Store payment scrutiny mounts in the UK as well. Apple's getting investigated everywhere, as as is all big Twitter tech. Twitter just came out in support of them. Um, they were on, uh, I forget the gentleman's name, but he was on Neelay Patel's uh, podcast, and Neelay was complaining about the new super, uh, the super follows on Twitter, and that he might have to give thirty percent to Apple. And Twitter said they really, they really like the fact that Android and Apple provides trusted robust uh, architectures for all this because it's really difficult not only to engineer them yourself but to gain the trust of a u of a very large user base yourself and that they saw it as an opportunity for creators to earn 70 percent not not to lose 30 percent to apple which i think is very similar to the feeling we have on youtube where they take i forget 45 percent or something it's 45 percent or something yeah, but you never don't have to sell any it. ads at all ever in your whole life they, they do it all for well you. i mean i have access to youtube's huge user base which would be non-trivial for me to reproduce right. as a solo video creator Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Mm. Mm. Oh, 
uh, to, to, to be to be fair, you have the option of going to Twitch. You have the option to going to Vimeo. You have option of going elsewhere. That's the 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 problem is that you're kind of locked into one uh, one payment processor mm-hmm. in one store. Well, Twitter, I think you like they're they're going to do it on the web. But they don't think it's going to be at right. all as popular as it is on mobile. It's just right. so nice, and I have to say. In some ways, I hate Apple Pay because it's too damn easy to spend money in the middle of the night on something you don't really want, but you're a little sleepy and you buy it anyway. Oh, I call that Apple Pay. Yeah, what have you done? <laughs> it just looks at me and says, okay, you paid for it. That's good. Is that like the new as seen on TV? Yeah. As, as, oh, as seen God. on Instagram with Apple Pay? Oh, God. Just look at me I, and you, you own it. Okay. I... I uh, I find that I, my, my shopping habits have really, I knew that it would happen over time, but now it's like, I, I look at gas stations. I'm like, oh, they don't support Apple. Pay. No, I'm not you're right. There. You know, like you're I, and I, and I right. go, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to actually put my credit, like the idea it's getting to the point where the credit card is like this shunk, shunk, like this slow, like, why am I doing Well, it's this? also a uh, non-touch. So the pandemic has fostered that as well. Right. When I was in yeah. the grocery store, yes. of course, the first thing I say is you use Apple pay, right? And they said, oh yeah, of course. Right. Cause I don't want to touch anything. I just want to go like that with my watch yeah. Yeah. now type in your now type in the uh, yeah exactly you don't have there's to do that a, anymore though that's the greatest sometimes thing sometimes though yeah. for a while i had to do my pin every time i used my atm card yep. i guess it's the bank that makes that decision not apple you obviously st- you still have to do that you still have to do that in whole foods in, at least in novato and, and so i i, I tra- the funny thing is i'll be in line in whole foods and i'll transfer money from my my ATM account to, your to my Apple, Apple account just so, you can so that I can make sure that my Apple card yeah. is the one that's getting charged. Oh, that's right. Just, it, that's what happened. I stopped using my bank account ATM. I started right. using my Apple card. That's exactly, exactly what happened. That's why I don't have the pin anymore. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> no, but it's just, it's just like, it's stupid, you know, and, and you're just like, I don't want to use the yeah, ATM. Because you know I who I am. Yeah. You know, I don't need to enter a four digit code. Like that's going to add yeah. any security at all. I, yeah. They need you to because they, they that's how they that's I how they, they they figure out who you are as they drag their knuckles I along understand. the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's take a break, and folks, your picks of the week are coming up next. But first, a word from my pick for VPN, and there is no question about it: Express VPN. Did you see the uh, judge, the court judge, the other day who said, "Wait a minute." Incognito mode in Chrome doesn't hide your activity from Google. Yes. She was flabbergasted. Yeah. She was like, that's Uh-oh. wrong. Sorry, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> that's wrong. Incognito mode, we all learned something today, does not hide your activity. Uh, it doesn't matter, frankly, what mode you use or how many times you clear your browsing history because your internet service provider and Google can see every single thing you do. Google sees every search you make. Your ISP sees every website you visit and every search you make. Unless you're using ExpressVPN. In fact, it's so nice because you can put ExpressVPN on many routers so that all your traffic is protected. Now, I know in, if you've used other VPNs, you might say, oh, that's going to really slow me down, but not ExpressVPN. They really invest in infrastructure, invest in servers, uh, and they're all fast. So you don't even notice the fact that you're going through a VPN. But that extra hop hides all of that information from your ISP, who is completely legally entitled to record everything you do and sell it to marketers. Uh, every search, your IP address goes to Google. But if it's not your IP address, if it's ExpressVPN's IP address, good luck with that, Google. It doesn't matter if you get your internet from Verizon or Comcast or, or any ISP. They can legally sell that information on, not unless you're using ExpressVPN. It's an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers. Now, of course, people are going to say, oh, but wait. Now ExpressVPN knows that stuff. They do, but they don't care. They don't want it. They don't log it. They don't keep track of it. In fact, ExpressVPN cares so much about your privacy, they go to the extra effort of using, and I think they were the only VPN to do this, a RAM-based server. They call it the Trusted Server Technology. When you press the button to start the VPN, it spins this RAM-based server up, stays in RAM, it's sandboxed, it cannot write to disk no matter what. It cannot record anything that's happening. And then when you leave, it disappears from memory and so does every trace of your visit. And I'm not making this up. It, they have independent third-party uh, auditors regularly come in from PricewaterhouseCooper. They verified that Trusted Server works exactly that way, that the ExpressVPN privacy policy is exactly as stated, that they literally do no logging. And ExpressVPN is fast, easy to use. It's on all devices. You can put it on your phone, your computer, your smart TV. 
Actually, that's the first thing you should put it on is your smart TV because you know this. Alex is right. You should never give your TV internet, but if you do, you probably should run ExpressVPN with it. Protect your online activity today with a VPN that is number one rated by CNET and Wired. Uh, proven safe, proven effective. And you know, it. you're going to say, oh, I can get a free uh, VPN service. Yes, you can, but they're going to spy on you because they have to monetize somehow. ExpressVPN charges a very fair. It's about seven bucks a month. That's how come they have such great infrastructure. That's how come you can trust them. They don't need a log. I think that's a fair price uh, for exactly the best service out there. ExpressVPN.com slash MacBreak actually gives you a bit of a deal. Sign up for a one-year package. You'll get three months free. No matter where you are, even at home, you want to use ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN.com slash MacBreak. Protect your online privacy. They're the one and only VPN I recommend. Express vpn.com slash MacBreak. Thank you, ExpressVPN, uh, for supporting MacBreak Weekly. We like doing this show, so we're glad that we have advertisers uh, to support it. We appreciate it. Uh, I think it's a good time to do the picks of the week. Who wants to start? Show of hands. How about if I start? I never get to start. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. I beat oh, you yeah. to it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this came, uh, this product came to me from... A um, a mention on our twit.social, which, by the way, I'm loving, our Mastodon instance. I don't use it anymore. I use uh, I don't use Twitter anymore. I use twit.social. You're welcome to join. Just mention you heard me mention it on MacBreak Weekly. I'll get you in. Uh, Darren, who's a D A R R I in a twit.social, says, "I love you like you. I love using my iPhone in a folio case. I found these and I love it." I can use it with my Apple case or none at all if I want. He says it's my pick of the week. It is mine now from a company called Geometric Goods. They're at geometricgoods.com. They sell through eBay. It's a guy. It's a Polish guy. And actually, it's really sweet. I got to show you. He sent me a note, a handwritten note saying, hello, Leo Laporte. Thank you so much. And I'm going to, so I got a case from him and then he threw, threw in the MagSafe wallet. So, and I don't know what this is, but he threw that in too. I guess it was a little extra leather. This is the case. Well, the reason I like it is it's a MagSafe case. So it uses the MagSafe to hold it on, which is nice because there are times I want to use MagSafe to charge. And most of, most folio cases, no folio case, including it, maybe Apple's does, can charge the back of this. This is really nice. Looks Thick nice, yeah. Italian leather. It's really, really good. I told Darren, okay, I'm going to buy the same case as you, but I'm going to put my name on it so you won't accidentally confuse it with mine. Uh, it is really a nice case. Oh, it feels so good. And, and I just love it that it's so easy. I have, you know, I had a, a pad and quill uh, folio case, but I had to take it out of the case. It was a complicated process. Now it just detaches. And then, and then this nice guy, Roman, he sent me a little little thing on that goes on the back. I wouldn't use this because I'm afraid of my, my cards falling off. But I know Apple, but they just sent this along for nothing. So highly recommended. It's, uh, it's uh, on the web at geometricgoods.com. Uh, and you can, uh, and I think that'll send you to their uh, Etsy site. They have a lot of other leather stuff. Very nice leather. I'm a fan of leather. Very nice leather working. It smells good and all that. So that's my pick of the week. Th and thank you, Darren, for suggesting that on uh, twit.social. I appreciate it. Now, Alex, you were second to raise your hand. It's your turn. So my, my pick, I, I was talking about Otoy as kind of a side pick because I just want to make sure people knew about it. Um, my pick of the week is actually the, um, let's see if we can switch to this. Uh, this is the OC White Ultimate Ultima 2. Let's see here. Oh, my God. That, so is the heavy, is the that is arm. the heaviest duty mic arm. It looks like the Terminator. It is. I haven't gotten like the cable done yet, but the the joints and it's an it's an underslung one, so it's nice and low profile, and uh, it is the best mic arm. I have put this off forever because of the price. I will admit, it's three hundred twenty nine bucks. So I've been like three hundred twenty dollars for yeah. a, you know for a um, a mic, um, but it is uh, it's great. <laughs> like it's <laughs> like I, and I I I finally just was like I'm gonna I'm trying to really get my whole kit. See, know, I don't really want to mount it on the in. table like this because I get uh, you know I get the uh, boom 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 telegraphing through it. Well, maybe this um, is, is is damped enough that I won't. You know, uh, yeah, you can you can mount it all kinds of different ways. It just comes with a shaft, so oh, you can okay. decide how you're gonna mount it. I can um, put it on. A, know, so I can put it on a, a, a tripod or something. 
Yeah, I'm not even using the right. Uh, I'm not even using there. I had already had a mic stand, like a attachment for my table, which I this is the way I use it. Um, anyway, so yeah, you can attach it any way you want. Um, and I was at a podcast studio and, and it, they had six of these around the, around the, the thing. And I was just, I looked at it and then it took years for me to come around to actually buying it. Cause I just kept on going, putting it into the cart and just going, I'm not going to spend $300 on a mic stand. <laughs> and then <laughs> what makes it so good? I, I mean, it's just, it is just a so mic stand. It is, but it's, so it's underslung. It's super solid. It just has all the joints in the right place. Like they have it. I don't have mine set up that way. Like if you look at there, that's the one I wouldn't do it that way. So mine, if you look at it again, uh, let's see. Oh, I lost my iPhone. This is, by the way, you know, You're using your. Are you using your iPhone to do this? Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's nice. So this what is, program are you using um, to do that? Filmic Pro. So Filmic, Filmic Pro has a uh, has a um, uh, Filmic Pro has a clean out. Oh, from, that's from nice. The iPhone. So and I just have this hooked into my ATEM switch. So that's hooked into this the iPhone. Here, right. Has a so lightning to HDMI connector. Uh, I have a, I, this is, this is, no, this is, yeah, there's a lightning. I have a lightning to HDMI oh, connector on it. Those are just cables you can buy on yeah. Amazon, but then yeah. I have it going into this uh, switcher here. This it really looks more switcher. like a, He's Burke's like a saying it looks more like a monitor arm. It looks so heavy duty. It is. And it's, it's solid, you know, and the thing is, so I slung mine underneath like this. And yeah. so, um, and it's just super solid and it swings in just the right way. So I, when I, when I step away, I just kind of swing it out. Nice. And then I swing it back in and it's just, and it gets out of the way. Cause I've got other monitors up we here. We got the crappiest mic arms ever. And, Actually, this and mic so, arm is crappy. I have Heil in my uh, other studio, which is fine. Yeah. But maybe the Heil, the Heil one is really good. It, it's, it's, uh, um, it, the, the Heil one is, is really good. This one is just at a different level you know what's and, in the, and again what, what's in the middle part it's got it looks like it could be storing crackers in there or something what it's is, a that's a that's where you run your cable through it and uh, i just haven't done that yet okay. I, i've had I, I, there's some there's an intelligence test here about how to open that up that i've failed so far so i'm, I'm working on that <laughs> I, just, I, I, I might have to break down and read Jonathan the manual do a, i saw a whole camera set up on something that looked almost exactly like that as well like a top-down camera yeah yeah, and so it's it they they make a lot of um of, of different ones there, but but this one is this uh, is the one I want. I want the deluxe triple mic arm with riser <laughs> now, and I can put that in the studio so, and it'd look just like the. The, you know. the problem is, is that the the reason I wanted the breakfast, underslung one is like it's for the so breakfast camera. Club. Oh, oh I it's like out it of the way. Yeah, it's out of the way. So so what happened for me is again, if I go back to the camera here, um, is that I want to be able to see these monitors here as I yeah yeah like, yeah. And so, so having it, it was, I had one coming down here and it was now in the way and I couldn't, you know, get to those. And so that was, you know, that was problematic. So from so OC white, ocwhite.com, the pro boom, Ultima gen two ultra low profile, adjustable mic boom with 12 inch <laughs> fixed horizontal arm. <laughs> nice. There you go. I don't know. A base plate of pre-framulated emulate. Yay. <laughs> Oh God! You're gonna make me spend money. It's so it's so great. Oh, Sorry. God. Oh. <laughs> you know I could justify it because that's you know I mean it's your job. It's, it's my your job. job, Leo. Yeah. It's look at it's this just crappy thing I'm this. using. This is like something I, we got. I don't know with a a kit for you know. I, I had know, the same. I was using Mr. the same microphone. arm that you. I used the same arm that you're using uh, until about a week ago when I got when this showed up. Or, or two weeks ago when it showed up, so it was it was exactly the same thing. I think I might have even looked at yours and bought it, and and that's what I've been using. And it just well, the reason I use this one is it's like floor stand, so I can pound the table. <laughs> it doesn't. Go, <laughs> I, I admit that I'm pretty conscious to the fact that I can't pound the table now. If if, if uh, pound the table, let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear it. But it's not. I just don't do that. I don't pound the table, but this is a round table. In the old days, we used to have people sitting at it, and invariably right, of... there was somebody who would <laughs> and I'd have to say, "Can you stop pounding the table, please?" Were they outraged? Right, right. Is that why they did yes. it? Yes. Or... It was usually it was usually Ian Thompson. I don't know. It's something about the Brits. They a just, rump, a rump, a rump, they, yeah, a rump. Yeah, they just want to. They want to take <laughs> off their shoe and go. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Right, it's it's watching all it's it's just watching Parliament all the all too those much. Uh, yeah <laughs> too yeah, much yeah too much Parliament yeah. they're all yelling yeah. at each other. It's the Brits, yep. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, this is like a Steven Tyler arm. I should get some scarves. Maybe Freddie Mercury. I can. Yeah. Uh, good pick from O. C. White. I know. I only say good picks when it's a pick that I want really badly. <laughs> It's <laughs> a good pick. Well, and again, I spent probably after seeing it, I probably spent two years 
putting it off. Uh, yeah. Like just going, I'm not going to buy it. I'm not yeah. going to buy it. And yeah. I finally was like, I'm going to buy it. Yeah. So. Andy and Echo, pick of the week, sir. A uh, very, very common sort of pick. This is, t- I, I've, I'm uh, uh, teleporting into the early 2010s by by wearing a fitness tracker. Ooh, no, look not at a, you. It's not, a, it's not a smart watch. It is a fitness tracker, which turns out to be the right choice for me for now. Uh, it is the Fitbit Charge 4. It costs 100 50 bucks. You can easily get it for like 120, 130. Uh, and since the last time I looked at fitness trackers, like now the fitness trackers actually have like all the good stuff. Uh, this one has a uh, 24 seven, uh, the heart rate monitoring has sleep tracking. It has uh, tap to pay. Uh, it has, uh, uh, it has even overnight, uh, blood oxygen level for uh, a factor for, uh, uh for sleep, uh, for its uh, sleep tracking. It wow. has, not not custom watch faces, but it has like enough of a collection of watch faces available to it that you can just keep like scrolling until you find the one. Like for me, all I want the watch is I want it to tell me, tell me the time, the date, tell me what the uh, tell me how many steps I've I've done today, and tell me what my heart rate is. And there's a watch face that gives all of that. Uh, it also has uh, Spotify control in addition to the stuff like oh here's what your texts are. Here's uh, you can even uh, on my, on the Android you can even like respond to text. But the for me uh, the I've I I own like a, I think of a Series Three Apple Watch. I own a couple of other like Android uh, the Android Wear uh, smartwatches, uh, partly to just make sure that I know what how these things work you know, to have in my hardware library. But partly because I kind of want to like be wearing something that keeps me uh, on top of like how much I'm moving. And the thing is, they, I, I could never really get into the habit of wearing them. Uh, ch- partly because they were so, even the small ones are so chunky that, like, when I sit down to type after a couple hours, I find myself like taking off my watch and putting it next to the keyboard, and then forgetting it's there, and then that's it. Uh, but the big thing has always been battery life. That I just could never get into the habit of every day, each and every day, put it on the charger so that you can use it the next day. And it's not just because, uh, hey, oh, hey. It, the the response to that could be oh well just keep the charger in your nightstand like take it off when you go to bed but number one I want it for sleep tracking but also because again oftentimes I will take it off for comfort and then forget it's there and then it's not ready for me the next day the nice thing about this is that when it says seven day battery life I mean they really mean it it is so much it, it is it works for so long off a of battery that it's kind of an event to charge it up. And so at least once during the week, I will remember to put it back onto the charger. And usually when I put it on charger, still got 30 or 40% battery left. Uh, and that's what really does it for me. Uh, so uh, the, the, the message here is that I'm still hoping that, uh, I'm still hoping that there'll be a really full featured smartwatch that really does mm-hmm. everything for me. Like as, as soon as the Apple watch gets to two or three day battery life, I'll, I'm in. Uh, but until then, this might be the best solution for me because what, one, one of the impetuses for, for adding another like tracker or fitness watch to my uh, my uh, my uh, retinue was that I uh, I'm not going to get the vaccine until like mid April maybe, and I'm trying to like get my head around the point where there's going to be a point at which you are <laughs> at which you're go- you're going to have to you're going to have to mainstream yourself back into like regular I can leave the house whenever I want and do anything I want activity, and I need to. I need to get on top of my sleep habits. I need to get on top of how much activity I'm doing like every single day. And so I do believe that I absolutely need, uh, <laughs> I need a, some sort of a tracker on uh, 24 seven. And this seems to be the solution because I bought it about a month ago and I don't think I've really missed a day of wearing it. Oh, oh the other thing is that this is, this is popular. Uh, it's, the, it's a Fitbit. So it's popular enough that it does have like interchangeable watch bands and from third parties. I'm, I'm wearing the blue Milanese loop Ooh. with the magnetic enclosure. Oh, that's Ooh. nice. Yeah. Yes. So, so like I said, it's giving me enough of the Apple Watch experience uh, at like half the price of what I would be willing to pay. Uh, it's not, it's not the cheapest one, but I think it's at the top of the line for fitness trackers, and it does it's deliver re- all of the stuff that I really, really it's want. It's remarkable how much they're able to get in these things at that price. I mean, GPS is yeah. in this. I mean, that's uh, for 150 yeah. bucks. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, when you turn the GPS on, that's like okay. You got about four hours before. Oh, really? <laughs> before oh, you need never to get, mind. I mean, it's, that, yeah. that that turns that turns into like a one day watch yeah. as opposed to a seven day watch. Yeah. Uh, but that's not something that you need necessarily need to turn on like all the time anyway. That's that's not something that I would turn on all, all the time right. anyway. Just when you're running uh, so. or whatever. And exactly. Yeah. So this is uh, now part of Google. They bought them. So uh, Fitbit's latest, the Charge Four. 
Yeah. It just came out like last, late last year, I think October yeah. or November. Yeah. So it's a pretty current item. I see a, a whole lot of Fitbits around. Uh, most people don't want to spend the money on an Apple Watch, I think. Uh, Renee Ritchie, it's your turn. Save the best for last. <laughs> so, no, not at all. I, but this is going to cost you zero dollars, zero Alex's. And I think we mentioned Save it. We talked about it for briefly. Last. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We think we talked about it on our oh, previous episode. Oh, they recorded it. Uh, Oh yeah! So this was a surprise because you you you're you're not supposed to record clubhouses. You're supposed to put the word "record" in the name of the room if you do. You're supposed to get consent from everybody who comes up on stage verbally as they come up on stage. But through magic that I don't want to know about, I am completely happy being totally ignorant on this. The Computer History Museum got a recording of the Steve Jobs Stories uh, Clubhouse I, room that they ran on the occasion of his birthday. I was so sad that I missed this. I found out about the next day. And I was just was devastated so good. because it's everybody. I mean, we've talked to many of these people, but the great Andy Hertzfeld, um, uh, uh, lots of other people. <laughs> uh, looks so, like and they worked Re at Re Apple. Regis McKenna, so Esther Dyson. Yep. Um, uh, it's just, it's really a great group of people. Um, Mike Slade, hear, like Chris Freilich, Seth Godin was on it. I don't know why. Did he used to work for Apple? Andy Cunningham, Dana Lewin. That's really amazing. It's, just, it's Steve an Jobs embarrassment stories. of riches. Yeah, and I don't like. I don't want to get too spoil spoilery, but you'll hear things about like Steve Jobs recruiting people, and then them going to the restaurant and seeing the recruitment speech on the menu, uh, you know, <laughs> at the restaurant, or like Steve Jobs being adamantly, adamantly opposed to DRM, and then hearing about what it could do for the iPod, and and flipping around like 180 degrees <laughs> so fast. Uh, there's just there's it is so rich and like it's not idolatry it's not psychophancy it's real it's, stories from the stories. real people yeah. who worked with him yeah yeah oh I'm so glad it's recorded I felt so bad that I lo I missed it uh, thank you yeah. Computer History Museum for breaking all the rules and recording <laughs> it uh, it is on YouTube maybe they got permission after the fact that's I don't, they must I don't have cast figured it out yeah computerhistory.org slash blog slash slash Steve Jobs Clubhouse or go to the YouTube. Steve Jobs Stories. It's on the Computer History Museum uh, channel. About an hour and a half of Steve Jobs Stories. I am going to listen to that tonight. That's fantastic. Thank you, Renee. And what you mentioned is true. Like uh, there are people, if you, if you have a device capable of using Clubhouse and you, you know who to follow, you find like product managers from Instagram, from YouTube, up on stage, from Microsoft. I mean, like as opposed, like just not even Steve Ballmer and, and Bill Gates, but people who run the Xbox teams and who run various other teams there. And if you set like always alert me when this person is there, you can find it's just amazing, amazing yeah. information from the source, like not parsed, not distorted by anybody within the bounds of their of their media training, of course, but like straight from the source and it's invaluable. Yeah, I agree. Renee Ritchie dot com. I'm sorry, youtube.com slash Renee Ritchie is the place to go to watch uh, Renee's videos. He also does Apple Talks with Georgia Dow. Uh, anything you want to plug? No, except on the Georgia Dow vein, she started her YouTube shorts, and I'm sure she's going to put them on Instagram and on TikTok as well. She's doing a 30-day beat anxiety challenge where <laughs> she's giving you a new like 30-second tip every day to help deal with the anxiety that a lot of us are still experiencing with lockdown. Nice. So I started it with her. I started doing the video tips today. It started today, actually, and I'm going to follow them along. Where is that on YouTube as well, or is it you yeah, have to be YouTube.com slash Georgia Dow. Okay, great. Yeah, and I think... I don't think she's uploaded them to Instagram or TikTok, but I'll bother her about it right after this. Very, very nice. Thank you, Renee. And Renee will not be with us next week, sorry to say. He's going to get that special yeah. Apple briefing. Okay. It's not an Apple thing. It's like I I, I <laughs> Oh, sure. Oh, sure. I, it's actually, a, I, I agreed to do like this thing and it... it I didn't realize it was a Tuesday, and then it was too late. It's a government thing. It has oh. nothing to do with anything okay. in technology, but it's so hard to change government things. You can't change government things. It's okay. No. I actually wish you hadn't told us that because it would have been so much fun to think, oh, yeah, Renee's getting the you Apple briefing. It next week. Like, <laughs> play it off next week. Like, tell, I, won't, I won't contradict it. It's not nearly as interesting to think, oh, yeah, he's hanging out with the Canadian government. That just, just, just yeah. <laughs> Renee, just, 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 just be a sport and like post an Instagram of like your Apple Watch at an airport. Yes. <laughs> Just for, just for old just for times, old times sake. Sake. just to yeah. just to remind us what the Love normal it. times Love used it. to feel Love like. Um, Andy and Akko, when are you? Don't yeah, we all remember that, and it's coming back someday soon. <laughs> well, the, I I feel it. I feel it. I think we're getting there. Andy, uh, when will you be on WGBH Boston next? Uh, my usual half hour high tech Heidi Ho is going to be at 1 p.m. on Thursday today. Go to wgbhnews.org live or later in order to stream it. 
And I think everybody knows that Alex Lindsay <laughs> spends his time in front of a microphone with a very nice stand. <laughs> Uh, Why, thank you. It's called Office Hours, and you can uh, catch it. Well, the, I think the thing to do is either follow Alex on Twitter, A-L-E-X-L-I-N-D-S-A-Y, or go to his YouTube channel. If you go to his YouTube channel, you can see recordings of some of the Office Hours stuff, but the whole thing is mostly not recorded. So what you, this, the trick is go to one of the recordings and then go look uh, in the... Oh, is it... Uh, that, that one's new. It may not be updated oh, yeah, yet. Not, oh, yeah. that, that's the night one. Golden, that's, that was last night. That was last night. He does it all <laughs> the freaking time. time. Yeah. It's 24-7. Yeah. It's amazing. It's, can I, can it's I, can I just of, say it, that the, o the only thing you need to know about uh, Alex's credibility as a streamer uh, and for, 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 for live casting is the greater the disparity between the tidiness of the background and the tidiness of the desk before him, the more it's credibility perfect, this person yep. has. Yep. <laughs> You never want to. You never want to get the reverse got, camera angle. No, nope, it's nope. got to be an Old Testament mess in front of you with all the equipment, yep. and then the cleanest, most beautifully lit, yep. plain background before you. That's why he gets the That's big. That's the real That's deal. That's why you just, you signed that. You signed that check. You signed I, I that, that I, order. I kind of ruined that illusion, didn't going. I? Like, because I. No, we're no, always no, no. talking. <laughs> Yeah, the funny what a thing mess. Is, is that I gotta say, what a mess. We're we're always no, no, talking about glorious. all the things. So, <laughs> so the, the thing is, is it's we're always talking about all these things. So in on office hours, and so all these things are like within hands reach because we're always picking them up and showing them. And so there's always these like you kind of have all these like props that you're kind of picking up, and and they're all just within arm arms reach or just over. It's over. heaven for content creators. And actually, there is a Bitly URL bit.ly slash the office hours. Capitalized. Camel caps, camel caps. Yeah, because if, if you don't, if you don't, it goes to something weird. <laughs> something like else. It's, but so it's, I, it was a mistake. But I can't. There's so many people that have that link now. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah. There's capital that. T, capital O, capital H. The office uh, hours. And then it's Alex Lindsay as well on Clubhouse. I'm uh, on Wednesday nights at seven. We do club. We do office hours, but just on Clubhouse. Although we still use Makana for the question and answer because Clubhouse doesn't have that. It's very limited. It's perfect. You got it all, all the tools together. We do yep. Mac Break Weekly Tuesdays, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, next week, we are springing forward. So while oh, this no. would normally be 1800 UTC, yeah, oh. So while the, <laughs> make a note of that, everybody. The clock, our clock's moving forward, which means it will be plus eight. I don't know. I can't figure it out. You've, I just want someone to run. I just want someone to run, run, run for office that just says, "I'm going to get rid of this this I, nonsense." I, you know, I would vote for him. I wouldn't need to know anything I else don't about care. their. I don't care who don't they care. are. I don't care. Like if uh, if Donald Trump had done it, I would have voted for him. All, it was all he needed to do to win me over. <laughs> That's all I need you to do. Like this is nonsense. We're going to get rid of it. We're past it. Um, like like I would I would be like, yeah, sure. I I'm I'm I'm, I'm there. I don't care. And they'd be like, well, do you want to hear any anything else from me? No, no, I don't. I actually, don't want you to tell us anything else. Like someone should just run on the time zone platform. I agree. I'm not going to tell you anything else about what I'm going to do. I'm just going to change. I'm going to get rid of the time zone. And and I and they get a lot of votes. I think they just get a lot of votes because it just shows. Shows wisdom. I believe it'll be 1900 UTC uh, next Tuesday. But you, you're going to have to figure that out for yourself. All you have to do is go to twit.tv slash live. There's live audio and video of everything we do. And when nobody's in studio, there's a rerun. So you can catch it then. Uh, if you are watching live, even if it's a rerun, go to the chat room, irc.twit.tv. They're chatting live. Uh, and there are a great bunch of people in there. You can also uh, get on-demand versions of the show at our website, twit.tv slash mbw. There's a MacBreak Weekly YouTube channel. You can watch anytime there. If you're watching asynchronously, don't forget www.twit.community is our forums. Really a great place uh, to hang out. I'm, I'm in there every day. Uh, as are some of the other hosts. You can also, uh, as I mentioned, we have our own Mastodon server. It's twit.social. And uh, Mastodon is a federated kind of a microblogging service like Twitter, but better. So uh, I'll see you in there. And uh, finally, uh, you can also subscribe in your favorite podcast application, which doesn't care if it's daylight saving time or not. <laughs> subscribe and you'll get it automatically the minute it's available. Period. That's all you have to do. If you subscribe... Uh, whatever platform, if they've got reviews, please leave us a nice review. That'll really uh, help us. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being here. Now back to work because break time. Well, it's never break time for Alex Lindsay, but for the rest of you, break time <laughs> is over. 
Hey, if you like tech news, but you also like hearing about it from the people who are actually writing the stories, well, I've got a show for you. It's called Tech News Weekly, and it's me, Jason Howell, along with my co-host, Micah Sargent. Every week, we invite the people making and breaking the biggest tech news stories from around the web onto this show uh, to talk to us about it. It's a lot of fun. You should check it out. Tech News Weekly can be found at twit.tv slash TNW every Thursday. We'll see you there.